What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Bangkok Strange Podcast. As always, I am Dana Blue and joined by my co-host, the bald, the beautiful, the bodacious, Mike Summer. Greetings, aloha. And of course, today we have a very special guest in the studio. You may have seen him before on the uh, Lady Boys and Drugs episodes with Tony mm, Huge. Amazing. Mm. We got Eric Prince, aka Minority Nomad, back in the house. Eric, thank you for taking the time to come thank by. Thank you, brothers. Thank you for having Good me. Good to see you, man. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, you too. You too. Looking swole, looking sexy. I'll be all right. He's bald too. I have my moments. Yeah, he, super sexy. He goes and gets it. Up. He, he mm-hmm. gets it shaved. He doesn't do it himself. I do it. Do him. I do it yeah. myself twice a day, every day. I, I see you going to the barber shop I to get have. hair because like, what the fuck is this? No, no, no. Get <laughs> yeah, he was talking shit. I'm like, there's. Oh, you want a razor? Yourself, it's okay, but sometimes you want somebody giving you a know, hot towel. Oh yeah, shave, straight razor. Bit, little, straight razor, of course. Game changer. And rub, rub you down a little bit. Mm-hmm. You a hater? Damn, he's a hater. Nah, I know. Well, it's because he's white. You work with this guy exactly. We don't talk about that today. Copy that. Absolutely, reason. absolutely. Right. Black and Bangkok. Don't yeah, so, ass white guy. so that's what we want to talk about is because you've built your whole brand around being a black guy, yeah. traveling the world, but you call Bangkok home. Yeah, it's Bangkok. So for how long now? Uh, six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the same. You guys, did you meet like early on when you got here? Too? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it must have been early. We met Maybe. on what Jermaine's video, yeah, right? Yeah, it had to be at least four or five years. It, we okay. met over pizza, right? And he's yeah. like, he's yeah. like, fuck you in that pile of pizza. Wow, he's it's like, always been something with you guys. Yeah. Huh? It's like a married fucking couple. He has terrible too. taste in pizza. I, I do not. <laughs> a terrible taste. I mean, well, then I gotta because I got I got you online. I, got I gotta you. hang out with you, man, yeah. because I need peanut. Everywhere is better. Well, you keep saying we're gonna go to Lemoncello. We never go to Lemoncello. Really good. Pepina is really good. New York style pizza is really good. Pizza Mania. I've pizza, heard that's good. Pizza, they is used that good? to be. Yo, okay. Pizza Mania. You know what makes Pizza Mania so much better than Pala Pizza? What's that? Because Pala Pizza is damn near fro- frozen the whole time. It's oh freeze dried. It's sitting it in the fucking window for an hour dry. before you get it. <laughs> Slow fermented dough. Nice <laughs> and thick. It just thick. sits there no. and staring at people. I don't want my pizza staring at me when I walk in. Got it. Okay. I want to get it. You know. You want to stare at it. So you know, yeah. I I used to like a. Uh, Pizza Mania, but I feel like they've kind of fallen off a bit. Yeah, they got too big. Too big, and, too fast. Yeah, and so, but then New York, like their 18-inch New York, if you order mm-hmm. it like well done, it used to be pretty damn well good. Well done? What, do they flip it over and no, stuff? No, so they Pink just in the it middle? like another like yeah, 10 actually, minutes. Yeah, it's really? super crust. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you know, it's but I, good cheese, though, right? Really yeah, good cheese. Well, okay, I, yeah. I wouldn't know about that. I but like the cheese. The sauce was okay. Not as good as Paula's, but. I test everything on based on the quality of their pepperoni pizza. If I it's agree. a good pepperoni, yeah. then they know yeah, what time it's it is. important. Yeah. yeah. And if you're going for, especially for a New York slice, yeah, exactly. right? Like, yeah. Pepperoni's got to be the, the mm-hmm. gold standard. Yeah. I mean, they can add some vegetables in there, but it's kind of like, dude, I didn't know it was a fucking salad. Yeah. Come yeah. on, well, focus. You do that after you've sampled the slice of the oh, pepperoni. That's all, it, it should yeah, be, nice it should be it, it's the dough. It's the yeah. sauce and it's the cheese. Mm-hmm. That's what it matters. But, That's how I recommend. Like, I'll get a cheese pizza to figure out if this place is going to be good. That's where you I'm you go cheese pizza. I go cheese only because not pepperoni. It's difficult to find like American style pepperoni in a lot of places in the world. Yeah. Okay, they that's replace fair. it with some salami local shit. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Okay, right. but cheese, or whatever. Yeah, so cheese in general is easier okay. to figure that out. Yeah. you know. So what about that spot that sells slices over behind those at Exchange? You've been there on Twenty Three. Mm, it's like no, right no, up no. on the corner, like you're walking out that ex- the mall in exchange, like to come out at the back. You mean Soy Cowboy? Yeah, close to Soy close Cowboy. To soy. You, bang, okay. you bang a left, and you're on the, the Cowboy. Oh, you're talking about uh, the the place uh, Italian place on the corner next to Subway? No, no, no. It's it's in like it's like literally not Little Italy. It's like literally on the exit of like the the uh, Exchange Mall, the Exchange Building. Oh, I don't know. I'll check it out. And like, as you walk out, it says Pizza by the Slice. It's on oh. twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like know. literally, like, you walk out the double doors. Take a right of that place, and if you, it's on your left, you don't even have to go on to twenty three. It's in the exit oh, of the building. Yeah, because I, I don't oh, come out of exchange wow. that often. Okay. I'll check it out. I'm I see, on 23 a lot. I though. see people lined up over there. Okay. Like, you walk by 4 o'clock, they'll be like, lines. Oh, okay, I'll Lines. check it out. Because I know there's a bank in there. I mean, yeah, you mean before you leave the, lo- leave the lobby? Yeah. No, no, you leave the lobby. Yes. You're outside. Immediately. you're not on the sidewalk yet. Uh, you're on the stairs. Like the marble. Well, that, that, that marble flat spot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Really? Okay. Well, you, all uh, see, you see all the Soy Cowboy girls huddle up when it's raining before they make the sprint? Well, you had me at Soy Cowboy. I mean, I give a shit about pizza once I'm over there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about Soy Cowboy a little bit. All right. <laughs> Eric's been once or twice. Uh, a couple times. This week. Just to take pictures. Yeah, <laughs> just absolutely. Take, just on days that ended just why. Document it, yeah. Just document the just experience. Just document the experience. For the, for, the, for the listeners. For the gram. Yeah, for the gram. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever seen a cowboy shot in your gram. Nah, man. I, you or, know, or even I, a red light shot. Man, that's that's perfect. That's done purposely. 
I you've seen a lot of videos in red light. District. Yeah, yeah. I do a sure. lot of IG story shit in yeah. red light district. In general, in general, <laughs> I love it. But the the thing about my feed is my feed is my job. Yeah. So anything, whenever you look at my feed, that's what clients look at. Yeah. Most mm -hmm. don't go back and look at the stories or, yeah. or follow you long enough to care. But if they see a red light shot, it's it's, it's just a um, it's like a red flag to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't give a fuck, I go to red light district yeah. all the time. The issue is when a client like Chase Bank, for example, mm -hmm. reaches out. Is because they looked at my IG and mm. saw me on pretty pictures, not hookers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, you, and you can get that pretty much anywhere. Right? Not I mean, even there's pretty plenty pictures of other of guys. Hookers. Yeah, not even pretty pictures of hookers. No, Those well, are hard to get. And if they don't like pizza, that's not my kind yeah, of hooker. Yeah. Damn right. Got to have home. standards, buddy. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah, six years. So we met. Probably you were here. I was here a few years. So you must have been here like maybe a year at that point. When yeah, we yeah. Met. Give or take. Yeah. yeah. And so, what made you pick Bangkok as like home base? Quality of life, man. Uh, I, I get this question a lot, actually, a couple times a week. And it, it's difficult to answer because it's just one of those personal things. And mm. people are like, oh, show, give me a fucking list of the things that make Bangkok why. better. Yeah. I'm like, fucking no. It's just, it is. just why I feel love better. it. I just love it. Mm. It's like when I land at Savannah Poem, I feel home. Mm -hmm. Like the sounds, the air, everything. When I land at JFK, I'm like, fuck <laughs> yeah, hell. I get that. You know, like it, mm. it's one of those places that just speaks to you. Yeah. Now it's like Paris for a lot of people. A lot mm. of people love Paris. I hate Paris. So mm -hmm. like, I'm like, yeah, you can't tell me why you love Paris. Yeah. You, you just do. It's a feeling. It's yeah. the thing about it. Like, you know, if I have to make a list, I'm going to say just, just at the top is quality of life. Yeah. And, you know, that's a broad statement. Did you feel like that first day you landed in Bangkok? Yeah, from the first yeah, moment. Me too. Because I was yeah, excited. Too, yeah. Right, like, right, like, right. It was such an excited. I had never seen anything like Bangkok until I came here. And I was in the military for 10 half years. I, I went to everywhere, everywhere before yeah, I came right. to Bangkok. And because I was a soldier when I first came to Bangkok. Still, okay. I was in oh. Korea. And this is like, what, like 20 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago? Uh, this, is about fi this had to be about 15 years. 15, okay, 15, yeah. 15 yeah. years. Um, and when I came to Bangkok, I, it was... As a soldier, it's a different experience. Okay. Because yeah. you always have that one guy who's already been here before. He yeah. knows the ins and outs. He knows where to go. He kind of coordinated the trip. Yeah. So you're just alone for the ride. And, and there's ramifications if you fuck up. And there's a lot yeah, of ramifications if you get out of that. So you, you stick with the pack. Yeah. You know? yeah. You're like, no, no, no. That's what a lady boy is. Yeah, yeah. I thought you told us. <laughs> so like, don't, no, don't you touch knew that. that. <laughs> don't touch that. Okay. Okay. So it was. Uh, that's uh, not a video game. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Joystick. First, what do you. <laughs> the first time we came. Was you know uh, you kind of stick with the group yeah, yeah. You, know, right. you, go to, you go to cowboy then we go to patio mm -hmm. you go party yep. drink yeah. fuck, when go was home. this like what year was this was this is about like two thousand five uh, about two thousand five two thousand okay all right that that's time. a good time yeah yeah, to come here. Two, yeah, yeah it was. starting to modernize a little bit about, but, but still, still great wrong. attitude it's still, still grinding yeah absolutely so I, then I left the military and then I didn't come back again till two thousand twelve okay mm. two thousand eleven two thousand twelve. And as a civilian. Right. Whew. But to like, to stay, to work, to, to go. I, I, mean, was work, I was just backpacking. When you're here as a military guy, what are you here for? Like one week? No, we have four days. Four days. Yeah, four days. Four days to do Bangkok and Pattaya. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, 110% yeah. 80 miles we're, an hour. We're, yeah, like, exactly. I mean, <laughs> no, no sleep. And yeah. back then, uh, you're, you're young, you're strong, you're horny as fuck. You basically have unlimited amount of money. Right? <laughs> right. Back then, I think we were pulling like 5K a month. Oh, and yeah. Then we had not, nothing to pay for. No, no rent, no career food. pay. Yeah, yeah, we had no fucking idea. Like, all right. This is and going back then, still, the exchange rate was ridiculously yeah, even amazing. Now, I was like, you come here with five. Oh, no, that's below. a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, we, I, man, to this day, I don't think I've partied that hard. You know, really? Was, was that trip, man. Even with Tony? Yeah, even with Tony on the boat. And his birthday? But, but I think it's, I, I think it's, you know, even with Tony. You know, <laughs> like, make sure you put a link to that. Yeah, yeah there'll be a link in the uh, show notes. We party our asses off. But th there's, there's a difference. So, uh, and this goes to being black in Bangkok. Yeah. It, my entire group, we were all brothers. Okay. All of us. Right. It was, uh, it was nine of us then. Okay. And we were all black men from the United States who had never been to Thailand before. Oh, okay. So this is all right, first time. So, so not only is this, uh, you know, our first time really mm. overseas, but this is our first time like going to red light districts yeah. and going to bars and doing, you know, we had some guys who were 19 with us, okay. like 20 who couldn't drink back home. But right. They're here. like, this is awesome. I mean, we can go out. Sure. And you know, there's no restrictions on us. Right. If you go, if you go to Houston, yeah. I mean, if you go out in Houston, right. you still gotta kind of look out for you. You gotta watch your back. Mm -hmm. You can't. You gotta watch what you say, how you move. Yeah. 
in Bangkok in Thailand, there's no rules. Especially, I mean, you're like what, 1920, friggin' perfect body. Jets, All yes, of your buddies are like totally. Are All you, of us. Are you like those dress? What do they call them? Dress blues? No, no, not, no. no. Oh, we you come in civvies. You come in civvies. Oh, okay, yeah. so they don't yeah. know that yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, the, but, the Air Force don't want you walking around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, had the no, idea. No, no. Like you see but, these, like see these wings, baby. But in hindsight, yeah, you know, it's funny. In hindsight, uh, we were in Pattaya uh, right before COVID hit, and they had a uh, Navy exercise. Yeah, uh, that they, they and they still come in and out quite regularly, and we just me and my and my brother, my brother's still yeah. in the air force, so it was me, my brother, and our homegirl, and we were just all in patties to mm. party, and we're at the hotel, and outside of our hotel is a um, is a uh, fish tank. Yeah, right. So we're standing, we're like getting ready the to one go. you put your legs in. You mean? Or? No, yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> Where were you staying? Like right under. <laughs> so we we go, <laughs> and and you know you see the girls come in Ooh. for their morning shift, and you know you know what it is. And then sure. So one of these uh, jeep jeeps pull up. Okay. Right? Yeah. And ten young dudes jump out. Okay. Uh, high and tight. It was so obvious they were military. Right. It was like me and my brother Hair laughed. And, yeah. Like my brother. See the thing. My, my brother retires next year, so he's oh, he's wow. you know that's awesome. Old school. He doesn't move like a soldier. Anymore. Okay. Sure. You know? Right. Yeah. He's laid back, more right, relaxed. Right. Yeah. But they're all new. They're yeah. fresh. <laughs> and Eyes wide open. Like, Ooh. <laughs> so it's like I imagine that's kind of what we looked like when we first came through. But to have that kind of freedom as a black man, see. That's what a lot of as people a, don't. Okay, yeah, expand on a that. A lot of people don't talk about uh, freedom as a black man mm. because there's this conscious perception that yeah, as a black man in America, you can do whatever you want, but you can't. Okay. There's there's the law and then there's the rules, mm. and the rules are there's certain areas you don't go in, there's certain situations you don't put yourself in. Okay. There's still situations in the U.S. and this is always this that is Dana and I could with like not even absolutely. Yeah. You guys are right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give See, you, I am so ignorant I'll to this, I'll give you dude. an example. Um, so Eric and I both lived in Cleveland at different parts of our life. He grew up in East Cleveland, East right? East Cleveland, yeah. So I lived in a, a suburb just outside the city called Broadview Heights. Okay. And so the, I lived in like a cul-de-sac, little neighborhood, not a gated community or anything, yeah. but like little neighborhood, like middle class. Upper middle class? Or yeah, yeah, upper, upper middle, middle class, class. Right. yeah. Right. Oh, you're smiling. You're like, <laughs> no, dude. Bro, I know. He's a freaking exactly rich bastard. Like, he he got trees live. and shit. He got trees. These are trees. Yeah. Changing colors and shit. Yeah. You pay someone to mow your lawn. Well, sweaty, like, we would go well, when, when we were kids. I, I'll yeah. let you get back to your story. When we were kids, we would drive to his neighborhood to see leaves change. Really? Like because man, I grew up in we didn't have so we had trees, buildings. Like, like East, you lived East in a Cleveland big, is yeah. like yeah. like I, in building, like yeah. brick. Just like yeah, brick is that like because it's like downtown, like city. No, no, kind no, of no. Thing? So so that's just how it was. So like sometimes we lived in a four family building mm -hmm. then sometimes we lived in a single family then sometimes okay. we live we just moved around high cleveland density yeah, yeah. but okay. for, for the most part our part of cleveland wasn't um it wasn't as well maintained as his part of cleveland. got it okay it wasn't a, he lived in a fucking park basically yeah okay like, like they, next it, to the metro park so you like, drive through as a fucking deer running across the street hanging out yeah. like my parent we have those in our backyard i, I would see deer in my up. backyard every morning yeah, 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 same see, with my see, place yeah. now i would see a crackhead every day every yeah. morning in my backyard okay so, all right so there was there was during the uh, Obama's second election. I was still living in Ohio, okay. and I told the story on the stream the other day that, or it might have been on Twitter, that uh, I I put an Obama sign up in my yard. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, Cuyahoga County, where Cleveland is, is majority liberal, right? Okay. Broadview Heights, where I live, not so much. Mm -hmm. And I had been hanging out with like the Broadview Heights Democrat people, and there's like six of them, a bunch of hippies, and Republicans. They'd, they'd have like uh, you know vegan potlucks, some edibles, you know, then the good old stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of my neighbors came over just, and I had talked to this guy like one or two times. He's complaining. He's like, oh, we don't put those types of signs up around. Yeah, I remember you saying, okay, yeah. I was like, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, no, this is not that type of neighborhood. No, but dude, is that a black white thing or oh, is that no, a Democrat? I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to yeah, the. Yeah, I'm confused. So, so this just kind of sets the tone. Okay. So, but of course, you know, I, I did what any good neighbor would do and I, I called the Broadview, Heights, Broadview Heights Democrats and I asked them for a larger sign. Smart. And, and they brought Up it by. Top. There we go. Boom. Yep, right, boom. Right over Eric there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, We're bringing uh, him back to Paris, baby. So uncomfortable. <laughs> so <laughs> we should scoot to a little show. <laughs> but, but at one point, there were, there were some people doing canvassing for the Democrats of Cuyahoga County in, in my town. In my neighborhood, putting and, up signs. No, not just putting up signs, but knocking on doors, getting out the vote, like okay, that whole enough. thing. Yep, yep. And uh, which, 
And a few of my neighbors called the cops on them because there were black people walking on the sidewalk. And are you sure it was because they? Because again, I'm so ignorant to this, and I just don't. I don't. I, don't, I almost don't even believe you know, it fucking I, exists. Well, so I, I know that this is what happened because I was outside talking to one of them. Yeah. And uh, me and her were just having a conversation. She was, I think, uh, I don't know if I don't remember if she was a student at CSU or CIA. But obviously, clearly, but, you can well, see she, her she skin was, was... A, she was. She was black. Okay. Looked like Eric. Okay. Right. Very cute though. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. why we were having a conversation. Well, she he's was, more adorable than cute. No, really. no, for her, her, her. You, you'd kind of want to cuddle thank with you, him. You, you. Her, 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 her. I mean, dude, he was in the friggin' service. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll thank him for that service <laughs> later. <laughs> but, no, no, uh, not that service. But, but, so. Military. We were service. out there, and the cops pull up on my street. I've never seen a cop on my street. <laughs> okay. Like, I, literally, there's 10 houses on my cul de sac. Okay. Never seen yeah, a cop. Yeah, right. Totally. Ever. Why would they? And so this cop rolls up. And uh, he gets eyes like, "Hey, is uh, everything okay here?" I'm like, "Now is he white or black?" He's white. Okay. I live in Broadview Heights. So There's no black white. cops. Okay. So he's like, he's like, "Everything okay?" I was like, "Why would it not be?" Right. He's like, "Well, someone called, said there was a problem." Jesus I was like, Christ! I was like, "What the fuck are you even talking about?" Yeah, it, right. And I was like, "We're having a conversation." and joking like i think when she was laughing at something i said right. thankfully like when, i have a when, white when penis she's like that. yeah <laughs> they're all small yeah, she, she's yeah. like that stereotype is correct she's, well, probably, she's probably like hey, you had no chance <laughs> stop joking but but yeah so he's just like oh, okay so everything's okay i'm like yeah you can leave now were you surprised at it or were you just like this fucking asshole well, i mean one i was surprised i've never seen a cop okay. in my neighborhood she's before, like why ever. would he and then i'm like yeah what did i like everything okay like huh. when did it click in your mind like this friggin' asshole is here because someone on my street saw me talking to a black girl as soon as he was like everything okay here seriously so yeah. you knew okay because like how often do you see random cops driving down called this yeah yeah, yeah. Like, no but sure but... you know it's, it's it's context you know, yeah I, I think what a lot of people because black people we always get pushed back when we say some shit is racist like yo man this is racist but like, no you don't know the detail exactly what you said you didn't mean any ill for it <laughs> but you're like wait a minute how do you know that was about race i'm like man it's context it's, okay. it's history okay. right. it, it was like he just said like yo there's i've never seen a Cop cop in my neighborhood. Say, yeah, and then, yeah. then it, the unusual thing that happens is a I see a black girl, they're canvassing for Democrats in this mm -hmm. neighborhood, yeah. and all of a sudden cops magically show up out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, right. come on, man. Like it, it's I'm one of the least militant black people I know, right? Yeah, yeah. And I get to put I'm like, man, like yeah. th it's so blatantly obvious, but there's so nothing. The, you the year do. after I left Cleveland, the, the kid got shot in the park. Mm. They, yeah. the, this the, cop, you're talking about a black kid, I assume? Like a yeah. small, young was, black yeah, kid, yeah. 10 or 8, and the cop There's literally drives Rice. his yeah. car into the park, jumps out, draws his weapon, and kills the kid. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying this doesn't happen, okay? Yeah. But, I mean, is this just like one example of a really fucked up cop? I mean... No. The, no. no. Cle Cle so this happens well, on a, Thursday. A year before that, they, they shot up... They, uh, not East Euclid. They shot up uh, another car with like 122 rounds after a That's pursuit. A, okay. You know, man, it, it's so, like, here's the thing, man. White yeah. people are just learning. Like, yeah, I like, don't. Like, they're just, just figuring this stuff out. We've seen, like, I get in a lot of trouble for not posting more about this, talking more about this hmm. on my channels. I'm like, I'm so numb to this. Really? Like, it's, I, my entire life has been this. Okay. Gr you grow up with it. Like, cops be, you know how many times I got the shit kicked out of me by police growing up in Cleveland? Just because you were like freaking yeah. on the sidewalk yeah. with Dana kind of thing? Like, no, 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 no. So sometimes in Cleveland, and, and, and I can only speak to Cleveland. Okay. Sometimes the, the cops will want to set an example and remind you who's in charge, whose city this is. Okay. I lived in East Cleveland, which is next to University Heights. Mm. And in University Heights, you had Little Italy. Okay. You don't go to Little Italy. As a black guy. That's it. Okay. That, that's no, the rules. That's the rule. Because yeah. there's white friggin' Italians over there. Yeah, and, and it's their you their get turf. Fucked up. Not only will a white Italian put the hands on you, but you're gonna have to deal with the police also. Really? Yeah, because that guy broke his hand beating your face in. It, it's it's the, that's the rules. Like yeah. you don't go to Parma and date a white girl. <laughs> Like it, oh, even, you might not. I worked home. in Parma. What's Parma? Parma is like yeah, the suburb. white trash uh, yeah. suburb yeah. of. Uh, uh, of that's a great way to do this. It is. It okay. is. Well, have you ever seen that song Palmer State of Mind? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and no, that's really. you know it's funny you know I don't like to use white trash but I, saying, I will though yeah, yeah like, sure you, you I know would, exactly like, what you mean and those were the girls that would really date black guys it, it, they it, didn't give a fuck like, it's a, so it, Chevy plant 
Ford plant. Got like, it. Like, yeah. That's Parma. Well, like, that's, that's blue, blue collar. Blue but collar I mean, white people. But yeah, yeah white trash but is it was, less it was, than blue. It was a separate, and, and, and that's the thing. We grew up in a segregated city. Okay. So Cleveland was extremely segregated, and the cops had no problem busting your ass. Now, are they, these just white cops, black cops, or black cop, uh, Cops are cop blue. Seriously. Yeah, they, they, so they, a black cop would. Oh, yeah. They were, they See, were, that's where I'm just like, I don't fucking get it. Yo, like, you how can you be? So he's like a uh, black cop showing out for the white cops. Ice Cube. Oh, they're so, they're making a yeah. they're making a point. They, they're like, no, we're blue. Like, yeah, uh, black and we're you're blue. black, you're white. No, no, we're it. blue. So okay. you, I mean, so Mike grew up outside of Boston, but in Boston's like just as no, bad. But dude, you, you, you saying I grew up near Boston is yeah. like in, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. I was very protected i yeah. guess but i remember like going to umass boston for the first time because where i went to school like grade school whatever, like there was one black kid yeah. in our entire school and he was like bust in because he was like exceptional mm -hmm. or something like that so they brought and i you know i didn't know i'm like okay cool yeah lawrence is awesome fuck he's my height he likes to hang out you know and I'll, i didn't even so then i go to umass boston there's black people everywhere i'm like this is fucking awesome Right, so I like Sartre, and then I meet guys that are like Italian, and because it was very, you know, wasp like. And then I moved to San Diego, friggin' Mexicans everywhere, and I'm like, this is awesome. I'm practicing my Spanish, so I'm going through all these scenarios, <clears throat> and then I start hearing stories like this, like, dude, I am ignorant mm -hmm. to any because I don't look like when he says Eric's coming, like mm -hmm. literally the last thing in my mind was, oh, a black guy is coming to friggin'. Mm -hmm. I just. It's Eric. Because I think I think most people are like you. Yeah, most right? people, and, and and this is why I get so frustrated with a lot of movies like Black Lives Matter mm. or people who are painting all white people as you know, <laughs> right. or all cops, uh, to be or fair. all cops, you yeah. know, willfully ignorant and 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 and, and racist. I'm like no, it's 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 a small few. However, they're loud. The system, mm. the system that protected you, is the same system that oppressed me. Yeah. Okay. The reason that there's one black kid at that school yeah. was because of a system of racism and socioeconomic terrorism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's it's you know people try to argue against it and try to deny it, but it's undeniable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, when but what I appreciate about about people like you is now you will listen. <laughs> there are people who are so afraid of their losing their privilege that they won't even listen oh you're my I don't privilege see it. yeah like you don't i think he said like privilege you don't understand you have like he said the system yeah, you don't you don't think I, you have privilege bro oh this is good so here's the thing i had a guy he actually used this phrase on me he said dude here's the deal people with privilege don't realize they have it oh of course. and i'm like what are you fucking talking about he goes there you go I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. He says, dude, where did you? I'm like, I grew, you know, it was middle class. He goes, no, 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 no. He says, dude, anyway. So I understand the socioeconomic delta, mm -hmm. but the whole, okay, so then, okay, let's say this is bro, not. Bro, I feel like you're dancing around what you want to say. Just say no, what you want to say. I'm, I literally <laughs> do not know that I'm privileged. I just figure I work my ass off. My dad worked his ass off, and this is the financial reward that we get. And then I, you know. Can I explain to you why you're privileged? Yeah. All right. So, be, historically speaking, mm -hmm. being born a middle class white man in pretty much any society, yeah, is a benefit. Okay, that I that I have learned, yeah, and that starts that's privilege. Got it. That, that's where okay. you start. Okay. So you you already start if we're doing a hundred yard dash, you already start at the fifty yard line. Okay. Being a being born a woman, being born a person of color, mm -hmm. being born let's say you're disabled, being born let's say you're gay. Yeah, okay, you're all right, I, I understand where okay, you're going you with this. Okay, you start at the 40, it. maybe you start at 30, maybe start fucking negative 10 yards back. Yeah. And then everybody says, hey, right. race. Right. And then you win the race, and you're like, yeah, I ran the race because I worked hard. And yes, okay. maybe you worked hard. But uh, I had a head start. But you had a, a head start. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, and, and my issue with a lot of movements is that pe people refuse to acknowledge that, yeah, I had a head start, but people also refuse to acknowledge like, yeah, this person also worked hard. Mm. They may have worked hard, mm. and, but that's the way it is. So we yeah, have to okay. move in. So there's space. the reality, and then there's the, okay, okay, and there's what's what's fair. Yep. I've always moved. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned from my grandfather is life isn't fair. Yeah, right. Sure. And anybody who's teaching you that is full of shit. That's true. 
Life there, there's there's never been uh, who taught you that life was supposed to be fair. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. It. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Number one like, lie we perpetrate, right? Ask the gazelle if it's fair that the lion can get like <laughs> right. are you serious? I wish I was an elephant it's for Christ's sake. It's ridiculous right, to right. believe this. Okay. So when you start people in this in, in with this idea All right. that life is supposed to be fair, and then they look at you, yeah, like and they hear your life story or, or Dana or mm, whoever, sure. you know. Yeah, okay. Who, who has kind of a leg up in life mm, okay, and my sure. perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. it becomes infuriating and you carry this chip on your shoulder, okay. right? But then, you know... Well, not just chip, you're, you're fucking pissed. Oh, I mean, you're livid. You know, you really okay. burn shit down. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and there's levels to it. There's, you know, the the people like to make the Malcolm X and Martin Luther King comparison a lot. <laughs> like, 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 Martin, Martin was trying to burn, like, burn shit down in the later years. Right, And yeah. Malcolm started that way. Yeah, okay, and then later years, Malcolm shifted. All right. There's this... Middle ground, man. Uh, and, and when through my work, you know, uh, Dana, you said inaccurately earlier that I built a career off, you know, being black and traveling abroad. Well, Which, I, I, I didn't, did I say being black? No, 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 if no, I said I, being black, that's not what I meant. No, I, I understand. I understand. I know you. I, yeah. I understand what you're saying. But but I get this pushback a lot. Like one of my good friends is Romanian. And he says, "Hey, man, why do you just make content for black people?" And I'm like, "I don't like for every one piece of content mm. about race." I intentionally make four pieces that appeal to him. Well, I don't think okay. I, don't, I, I I'm thinking back to your content now, Eric, and I don't think I've ever seen a piece that specifically. You did one with uh, about dating as a black yeah, guy with yeah. uh, the girl as a Tory yeah, name. Yeah, Tory. And, and uh, so that's someone. the only one I can think yeah. of, and just because that was funny. And then I did a video. Uh, I did a, a piece as my, one of my more popular pieces about uh, how travel can save the lives of young black men. I don't think uh, I saw and, that. Yeah, one. And because then, it and opens then, their mind. Like, what is yeah, the reason? Yeah, quite a few. Okay. Uh, so. Um, we we are blessed with a, a, a street smarts. Okay. Basically, basic survival. Smarts. Yeah, right. If without it, you die. The, and it's a street smarts that you don't necessarily need in most places in the world. Okay. Realistically speaking, in Thailand, you don't really need street smarts here. No, it's safe, it's safe as hell here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it gives you this opportunity and sit back and observe things. It gives you a different perspective on how. The world moves. Okay. It gives you access to communities and people that somebody who's used to being in five star hotels doesn't have. Mm. When you grow up as a, a black man in America, statistically speaking, you're likely poor. Okay. So when somebody says, Hey, um, we want you to stay in a three dollar hostel, I'm like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, I got a I got a bed and a shower, same mm. school. Mm -hmm. And it gives you an opportunity to travel a lot longer. Yeah. Because your money gets longer. Did you feel ever like oppressed here because you're black? No, absolutely. Like not. no fucking cop. I've never no, seen a Thai no, cop like no. give a black guy no, no. any shit. I get high fives from police here. It's but, fucking amazing yeah. being black. Mm. Like like all right, y'all want to start talking about being black in Thailand? Yeah, yeah. All right. It sounds like uh, it's awesome. And, and this conversation, I have this a lot with brothers. I say that Thailand might be the best place in the world to be a black man. Really? But specifically a black American man. Because yeah. you've been to all the other Southeast Asian countries too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like Vietnam, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. You're like, Thailand, Thailand is, is it, it, dude. Thailand's okay, it. okay, cool. Yeah, uh, for, expand uh, on that. for a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons that Thailand, not, not only as a black man, but as a foreigner, is it tends to cater towards Western taste. Okay. So... Although I can fully immerse myself in Thai culture, Thai food, cuisine, uh, dating, I also have access to the Western stuff. Like I just came from M. Cordier to pay for my cell phone. Because like, <laughs> like, there's no other more expensive and, place and, to yeah, do it. I was, I was super lazy, so I grabbed KFC chicken pops. <laughs> like, right, exactly. Like, and, it costs more here than yeah. fucking home. And, you know, I could have bought $3 tacos the other day. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. a, taco <laughs> right. uh, oh, shit, you were with me. We yeah. were with yeah. the $3 Bell. taco $3 $3 Taco Bell. Jesus, you're going to die at 60 But it was three bucks for one. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I can't afford to buy. die. I can't afford to die. This is <laughs> so we, so you know, you you get access to the Western stuff as well as the actual real cultural stuff. Okay, out of Bangkok is it's it's very Thai yeah. people, and and for me, and, and and again, this is very clear. I do not speak for all black people right. here mm. in Bangkok or Thailand, um, particularly my African brothers. I would say I just said this yesterday. If I have ten friends here who are black, yeah, I would say seventy percent are not American. Right, I mean, it, yeah, it, you're like Zimbabwe. I mean, what yeah, countries from, from Africa? You, you see a lot of South Africans here. South Africans, South okay. Africans, right. a lot of Kenyans. Kenyans, okay. Um, a lot of people from um, Nigeria. 
Yep. Um, and you get a lot of British, a lot of British uh, blacks. Okay. I would say British blacks might be the largest black population here outside of Africa. Oh, really? Let me ask you something. Someone said this, and I said, you know, you're such an idiot. Of course, I'm not really educated, but they were like, oh, look at all these African Americans. And this one guy comes up to us, he goes, what makes you think I'm fucking American? Yeah. I'm African. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 because they wanted to be politically correct yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So you prefer, you just call me black. Yeah, I'm black. We're all black. So this whole yeah. African American thing, do you yeah. think that's kind of ridiculous? Uh, no, no, because it's a, a, it's a, it's a, there is a cultural distinction between continental Africans and African Americans. Okay. Yep. It is a, we, <laughs> It, there's a big controversy about if we even like each other, if we, even oh, if we fuck with each other. Okay. It's such a difference between okay. us. And even a, a lot of African Americans, I go back and forth with, I'm like, look, stop claiming African culture. We are not African. <laughs> you we grew up African. in fucking Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, right, right, Most yeah. of us don't even know our heritage. Like, right. but you guys, all of a sudden, you're from Ghana. Like, fuck out of here. You've never even been in Ghana. <laughs> yeah, what are you right, talking right, about? Well, you got the African ancestry test back. Like, and it's, uh, yeah, all right. Hey, that's but but that's, that's my soapbox. But here okay. in Bangkok, now, the great thing about being here is when we do something together it's it's special it's like yo like yeah. because it's so rare it's still so rare okay but you can move here without fear of the police without fear of each other yeah. and growing up in cleveland you fear other black men you you have you to. refer to them as brothers like I, white people i don't think refer no. to each other as like some yeah, high get... family thing yeah, right yeah. and so so you have, so but sir and is it like the guy down the street that you know has a gun or is it like you're walking down the street, never met this black guy before? Yeah, it, it, you're it, on it's, guard. It, it's you're on guard. And, and, not and here it, though, right? Not here. Yeah. No, no, no it's nice. not. It's all love here. Um, th this is something that uh, it frustrates me that a lot more black people don't discuss about the the abuse and pain that we have within our community amongst ourselves. Okay. Um, it's a very taboo subject that a lot of us who do speak on it get in trouble about. Okay. Um. People are like, oh well, he, that white guy's a racist because he walked across the street when he saw three young black men in hoodies. Like motherfucker, I walk across the street when I see right. three young black men in hoodies. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Like growing that's up my in my neighborhood, smarts. like growing up in my neighborhood, I got robbed. Like every violent thing that's ever happened to me happened to me because of like from a black person. Okay. Every single one, every robbery, every assault that it happened from black people. Jesus. I got shot at by black people. Well, I got shot at by. I was gonna say <laughs> who are, who are, who are like, kind of brown. black people. Like, Good story. When I, was in the there, I got shot by. Right, so there's that. I was yeah. gonna say you've been shot at by a few times. I've I, I been shot by a lot of people. <laughs> 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 but yeah, in this, but in, growing up in in the United States, right? Uh, uh, and and it's a matter of proximity. That that it's a fact. Um, statistically speaking, there's more black on black crime and more white on white crime, more Hispanic on Hispanic okay. crime. It's a proximity. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. people. Your neighbor. It makes sense. Like yeah, yeah. racist assholes trying to make you. Oh, what about black on black crime? Well, what about white on white crime? Yeah, yeah. is it right? Do the same Mexican thing. Mexican. Yeah, yeah, but but the the reality is mm. most of the most of the fear that we have of a racial standpoint is going to be of other black people. Was that diminished at all when you joined the service? Uh, yeah, that's because, pretty interracial. Well, right? because because the military is, it's a community. It's us. Yeah, mm. like you know everybody. Like yeah. cops are blue, soldiers are green. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all we're right. all in the we're same. We're all friggin' Marines. We're, we're all in the Air yeah. Force. Dude. We're all on the same gang. Got it. Yeah. Like okay. in the military, this is our gang. So that made you feel like, wow. This is pretty good. Everybody's our same gang. Okay, mm. so that's like the first step. Yeah, that the... was my first transition. It, it it's that's why so many uh so many people of color end up leaving the inner city or moving abroad is because of the military. Okay. I would say that's easily number one. Okay. Like, I, I mean, I'll go out on a limb and say that's 70% wow. of people okay. of color who end up out of, like, living abroad, um, living out, leaving their community. It's because they joined the military. So you're in the military and you come to Thailand for the first time. And yeah. you're like, holy, this is like yeah, the, like the freaking cherry was, on top. It was like watching National Geographic. Like it, like being in a documentary. Oh, I thought you meant titties everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the chicks with the rings same. around their neck, same, 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 same. boobs Honestly. everywhere. It, it it really it really was a a life changing transition. This is why this is why I ended up writing the piece of travel concerned the lives of young black men. Yeah, it's, sounds it dude. It's in our in our community, for example, you move with a certain arrogance, mm. uh, especially if you're is that a street smart survival it, thing? It, it, it's. Yes and no, um, because you you know the hood, you know how it moves, you know how it operates, you know everybody, okay. you know who's in charge, who's not in charge, um, and sometimes I can leave to you being a little disrespectful, a little you know, get out of pocket. But when you're picked up and you're dropped in the middle of Romania, 
and you're the only black person. You okay. see, right. you don't know shit. You don't know the language. You right, don't know right, the culture. Right. You don't know the rules. Mm. So it expands your mind. Okay. It makes you think about how other people, and, and makes you learn. If you're just in the hood, you don't got shit to learn. There's yeah, nothing right. else to learn. Yeah, you know, expand. this is my world. Yeah, right. My world is this. Yeah, every time I see yeah. a guy with a hoodie. I know what's up. Yeah, I, I, cross you know, the street. I was like, oh, yo, yo, man, you can't say this. You can't go here. You can't do that. Yeah. You know the rules. But the more different places, the more new places that you travel, it's always something new. It's always something to learn. So let's talk about mindset for a minute because you talked about like the first time you came here, you're like, fuck, it's like a freeing play experience, yeah. right? And in the yeah. army. Now you live here and you talk oh, about- Oh, so it was army? The, the oh, Air no, sorry, Force. Air Force. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I was yeah. army. He was Air Force. Yeah. Um, but you came in the Air Force and then you were you moved here six years ago. And like you said, it, you don't fear the police. You don't fear other black people, right? It's super safe. And there's this interesting sort of cross section of, yeah, I'm living in an Eastern culture with all these Western options. Right. How does that change your mindset now from- like that sort of arrogance of moving in the hood and like, like living in that type of environment to changing your outlook and your mindset, living in a place where there's none of those threats and a whole slew of opportunity. Um, I, I, it gives you a lot of self-esteem and a lot of confidence. That's awesome. Um, because That's it, so cool. it shows you that. And, and, and again, mind you, I was significantly older when I moved here. Yeah. You know, um, like 30. And, something. Yeah. And I had already <laughs> traveled the world. Yeah. Okay. You know? yeah. So, so my perspective was a little different. So I'm, I'm looking at this from a perspective of a younger version of myself. Yeah. Um, it, it gives you that confidence, that self-esteem and it, and it highlights that there are more opportunities out there for you mm. as opposed to what's presented to you. You know, um, you know, they mean well, but your family at times holds you back. Mm -hmm. And yeah. my mother taught me how to survive. Right. Mm. Like a parent's job is to teach is try to raise a good human and mm. and make sure they survive. That's all parents from birds to black women in the hood. Yeah. So my mother taught me the only thing she knew survival mm -hmm. in the inner city. Mm. Those skills parlayed very well to mm. uh, corporate life. Mm -hmm to military, military yeah. mm -hmm. like those things like like it was funny going into the military guys were crying because the ti was yelling at them like are you serious like you've never had somebody yell at you for not cleaning up or yeah. like my mother Make was harder bed. my mother was harder than any supervisor i had in 10 and a half years in the military <laughs> yeah <laughs> more like, than basic training was, or like my mom would call me ugly like i was like man you ugly as fuck i was like damn, mom. Yeah, this is the thing too like like in the in the army, they, they the drill sergeant and drill sergeant, they can't really beat you. They can yeah. rough you up a little bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I'm they sure your mom, you. your mom yeah. could have let yeah. off, right? My mother hit me with a baseball bat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I just, like, like, have you ever, most people don't know what it's like to be hit by a baseball bat. I know because my mother hit me in a baseball bat because I got a C. I got a C. Wow. Mind you, I was expected to be the best. Like, I was a great student. Okay. So a C in my house was death. Your whole house, like your brother, you have Yo, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I got a younger brothers and sisters. Okay. But there was, oh, but I was so the, you're eldest, the first one. I was the eldest yeah. of ten and a half kids, okay. and um, my entire life I carried this. You say ten and a half kids? <laughs> I, I don't know why I said ten and a half. Kids. <laughs> you hit the other one. I was thinking ten and a half years in the military. I was thinking ten and a half years in the military. Like, ten kids. Like, what is this half kid thing you talking about? <laughs> so each mom had a midget, like, <laughs> but it was like. I always carried this because I was the first son. I was yeah. the first grandson. I was the new generation. Yeah. So, and I came after the Black Panther movement. Like my people was, were Black Panthers. Mm. That that Black Pride movement. So I was expected to carry on. I was expected to go to college. Mm. I was expected to carry on the legacy to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So the expectations for me, uh, being a great student, being a great person, was extremely high. What's the d delta between you and your next sibling? Like a couple uh, of years, oh, a year, a year. Oh, so, and they, they didn't have at least that, that Bro, responsibility. Don't even get me started. I can picture, wow, I can okay. picture Eric in in basic training, sitting there getting dressed down by the give drill me the goddamn back. I, I in, his, in his mind, he's like. Bro, can't be worse. Bro, yeah. I would, bro, I would get into trouble so much for laughing at my instructors <laughs> because it was so fucking ridiculous. Them trying to be scary. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, like, dude, oh, you're give me a fucking baseball this. bat. You know like, how I learned how to do like, that? Come on, man. Like, like, I'm like, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna make you do push-ups. Or what? 
Like, so I'm gonna get stronger. Like, yeah. what are you gonna look at do? <laughs> like, but it was it, it was it, my my mother mm. uh, taught me, and I, let's go all the way back. My mother taught us how to survive. Yeah. Okay, and the lessons that I learned growing up in inner city taught me how to travel the world. Mm. And I, and I'm actually gonna do a piece about this, like how growing up in Cleveland prepared me mm. for the world. Mm. The world is very uh, is a very segregated place. Yeah, it, it, there are, there are invisible lines everywhere. When you grow up in Cleveland, you learn about these invisible lines. It, it, I think in Cleveland too, it's amplified segregation. It is. It is. It's historic. You can see it mm. not not only in like how people look, yeah. but yeah. just the food that you find in these communities. There's no fucking rallies in in no. uh, University Heights. There's no pierogies in East Cleveland. No, probably. exactly. So There's no pierogies in East Cleveland. When I first moved to just just to amplify this a bit, when I first moved to Cleveland. Uh, I was my office was in Parma. I was working for a, the telecom. Okay, and so I was married at the time to an Asian woman. Okay, and I went and she came out like a few weeks after me. She was selling the house back in Rhode Island, and so I went out and I uh, I looked at a few houses: Burview Heights, uh, Lakeview, Rocky River, uh, Seven Hills, and I, I saw one of these like larger houses in Seven Hills that was like in the houses in Cleveland, yeah, cheap no, compared free. to, yeah. to Boston, especially Rhode Island. Jesus Christ! Yeah. And so I was talking with the guys. I was like, oh yeah, I, I saw this one house in Seven Hills. I'm like, yeah, the neighborhood's like eh, okay, but the house is pretty baller mm. for the price. And he's like, yeah, but your wife's Asian, right? I was like. Yeah, he's like, I probably don't want to go to Seven Hills. Oh, it's not really? that type of place. They don't. Yeah. I'm like, well, what, what do you mean? And then a few years later, they arrest like the last Nazi war criminal in Seven Hills. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, it really it, it is really very clear. Like, yeah. uh, like here's an uh, example: the the number one restaurant in East Cleveland was a fried chicken and donut shop. Okay, called Peter Pan's. Okay. And that was the healthiest food you could find in East Cleveland. Oh, fucking come on! There's grocery stores, right? Don't they have no food? You never heard of a food desert? I, no. Oh, shit, you're so perfect. Dude, here's the that. thing. I grew up on the far east coast, okay? Holy in shit. In a suburb of Boston, and then I moved to San Diego. Shit. So, uh, food, so I mean... So, explain a food desert to so, Mike. So, it... it I'm yeah, we do. We, we, we did have grocery stores in the hood, right? We, were, yeah. we had salads. Kind, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of salads. Right. The problem is that access to it was so expensive. And so out of most people's range because the level of socioeconomics yeah. in East Cleveland was extremely low. It's not only the one of Cleveland is not only one of the poorest cities in America. East Cleveland, I have no idea. East Cleveland is a sub city. East Cleveland is not Cleveland. East yeah, Cleveland, different city. It's a different city. Okay. So East Cleveland was even lower than Cleveland. So what are the jobs like the majority of your neighbors had? It used to be okay in uh, like in auto plants, auto plants, yeah, yeah. steel mills. Okay, so like. Union jobs that, making, that don't exist, but that doesn't oh. exist anymore. So it didn't exist up. when he was growing up. Uh, it, 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 everything started to close when I was, was coming out of high school. Okay, got it. And a lot of people were going like that was like a pipeline. It was like, oh, you mm. went and worked for uh, four. Yeah, my dad GM. did this. I'm gonna yeah. Dad. So that's done. Okay. By junior year of my high school, those were there. These plants are closed. Now. Yeah. Okay, got it. And it was getting even worse. It was starting to get what people are seeing now with the whole COVID thing. Yo, we went through that 20, 25 years. So ago. the reason they call it the Rust Belt, Detroit, and then Youngstown. I knew even Detroit. Worse. I didn't know. Works. Cleveland yeah. was close. Yeah, okay, yeah, got it. Because it's right there. It was right there on Cuyahoga. So All that's right, where a it. lot of the steel would come would in. Make it. They used okay. to smelt the yeah. engines there. Yeah. And like a... I grew up, I would look at when I moved to uh, Broadway. Uh, Broadway is a Slavic neighborhood. Okay. Um, which was actually my my in, that was the most exotic shit to us moving to a Slavic neighborhood. <laughs> these white tall people. white chicks. Yeah, like, oh, this is dope. But, <laughs> but, not, but it was it, it was called Slavic Village, and everybody was like, uh, they were uh, Czech, uh, they mm. were Yugoslavian, okay. uh, Yugoslavia. Right. They were um, Russians, a lot of Russians, a lot of Ukrainians. So you're like dating a chick that's like a foot taller uh, than you. Great, she right. can it wrestle. So much fun. <laughs> but um, that's how that's how um, I, I learned about you know Central Eastern Europe. Okay. When I was growing up there. But the, the crazy thing was, I, I remember I would go to sleep to a fire from a furnace at the steel mill, LTV steel. Okay. Shoot, shooting out the top. It's shooting right? out yeah. the top. Okay. That now was that's the a mall, light. That right? was my nightlight. It's a mono. Steel yard, isn't that what they call oh, it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they shipped that. I, 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 yeah, okay. that's right. But it was like that's the kind of upbringing I had, right? So, growing up like that, not only growing up in a low socioeconomic city mm -hmm. like East Cleveland, and then growing up as a black person in that city, yep, um, and then joining the military. Um, it, it's it's very regimented. Your entire okay. life is yep. very regimented, so Limited, you don't necessarily you have an opportunity yeah. to think outside the box. Okay, got it. Or what the possibilities are. Yep. So when I started to travel the world, it started to expand. I started Minority Nomad just uh, just to 
kind of keep in touch with people, just kind of show my work to low income kids. Okay. Who I was trying to inspire to travel. Awesome. That's great. Oh, real quick, tell the statistic about the uh, passports. Oh, um, at the time it was, se- I, I got to double check it, but only 17% of African Americans had passports when I first started. What percentage of Americans have passports? Uh, it's, it's, 51, like... it's only 51 now. Oh, I thought uh, it was even lower than that. It, but okay. it was lower until yeah. uh, and then they passed the law where you need a passport to go to Mexico and Canada. Oh, right, right, right. And, and, you couldn't guess, use your driver's and, license. And guess where the number one place that Americans go? Mexico, Mexico and, would, and number two is Canada. Well, Tijuana is the yeah, number one. That's border. the number one and number two mm-hmm. place we go. Yeah, and then right. Europe right after. Yeah, that. no, we don't travel. So we just speak a different language. So going from so going from that that structure, that survival structure, and the military is they teach you how to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Like my job is to shoot people, uh, kill people, and break their shit. Okay. Yeah. In the inner city, that's your job also. Yeah, right. So you're like, I got this. Yeah, I got an A in this. this. This is easy. You got got a C and got hit by a bat. I'm gonna yeah. ace this entire fucking A Air Force easy thing. Is easy. So came out. So come out. Congratulations. Start, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, start traveling the world and just start putting my shit online. Mm-hmm. That's it. And then people started seeing it. So National Geographic reach out. BBC would reach out. Lonely Planet would reach this out. Great, These man. Shangri-La hotels, American Airlines, like, yo, there's va- wait, what? I'm. This is one of the first times that white America mm-hmm. has re- like really shown me I have value. Okay. I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. Right. There was no black president. Uh, well, there's, sure. There's, I mean. the, the only black people you saw then mm-hmm. were entertainers. That was it. Not they're, university professors? No, and Because no, we had a no. bunch of those. Okay. No, no, you're liberal. He went to the Air Force, man. Yeah, I went to, like, I didn't, <laughs> Okay, but I mean. He didn't go to university until 10 I years did. later. But also, it's, <laughs> That's my point, though. Yeah, okay. yeah I, didn't, I didn't go. I was in the military when I started college. Okay. You know? yeah. And even then, they were all white instructors. Okay. Um, and tenure, most tenure professors are white. No, still. that's true. I mean, we're at yes. So it, it's it's it, when when you start to have recognition from the oppressor. Okay. Right. It's a little intoxicating. Okay. I'm mean, like, oh man, this is nice. Huh? Okay, I can. Oh, you want me to go to London? For, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. But as time went on, I started I started to question my blackness because black people were starting to question it. It's like so. Explain to me what that you means. Blackness. to Question your blackness. Yeah. So there's this. There's uh, within our community. See, everybody sees the external struggles, but they never hear about the internal struggles. Okay. Internally, there are people who don't think Barack Obama is black enough. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> there's also people who don't think that Barack Obama is American. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right, whatever. Th- because they, no they're Obama. because for so many generations yes. we've had to fight. And scratch and claw to maintain our culture, our history, our identity, our lives. Okay. And part of that came from being as pro-black as possible. Okay. Of supporting as many black people and things as possible. Publicly. Publicly. Just, yeah, right. Publicly, privately, whatever. Okay. The one of the greatest sins in my household was dating outside of the race. Okay. There's still black women who like, oh yeah, you date black, oh, you're a sellout. You're not one of us. Wait, wait, wait! You as a black person date a black woman? Yeah, and a, a white woman. A white, okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, got it. Some of the big, some of the most like um, lauded black leader, revolutionary activists right now would tell you flat out, "Oh no, no, no! You're a sellout. You can't, you can't, can't do that. Absolutely, really. Not. Okay. So now, is this just in clear? Because I got to tell no, you, dude, this is no, absolutely not. This is across America. Okay, this is not a Cleveland thing at all. all you, right. you are as a black man. Oh, you can do whatever you want. But there are going to be plenty of people in the community who look at you very, very differently. Very differently. Okay. Because you're dating outside of your race. You're betraying. What if you date like a Mexican girl? Eh, kind of. That, that's okay? Eh, it's not too bad. Because I mean, it it's can. Not, it's not as bad as a white one. So I'll say this. So genetically, okay. you're, you're far better off spreading the seed. Meh. I mean, it's, it's, all, far and it's, wide. All, it's all ridiculous. Okay. No, so genetically, yeah, you're better off getting but, diversity in the pool. Yeah, it's ridiculous, uh, uh, overall, but it's also reality. Yes. Exactly. So you got to live in that but reality. you got to live with it. Yeah. So I'll post, uh, before I give you a quick example, I lived in Romania. I dated Romanian women. I'd yeah, right. post, I post, back then, I didn't give a fuck. So did post. her family like, care that you were? Uh, not that much. Right. They kind of did, but not okay. too much. Um, not to this extent that, you know, random black people on my social media it, pages care okay got it yeah. is that oh you fucking sell out oh that's why you're there trying you to get sell out is that is that what they call you like is there like a name for, sell out. for god they just say sell out coon or sell out coon yeah coon, coon or sell out yeah yeah you get that okay and you know as as my work grew mm. i i was surrounded by white people my co- mm. mo- even today most of my colleagues are white 
Mm. Um, there was not a black travel revolution. There's not, I'm a travel journalist. Most of my colleagues are white because the travel space has historically been white. You don't have like a bunch of guys that are seeing you following you going totally, dude, I got to go to freaking Thailand. I'm a not. black yes. guy. No. Okay. No. Because I mean, it's mature. The like do you have meetups? Yeah, the, the black yeah. guys that come down. Yes. Like, Dude, this freaking promised yeah. land. This yeah, I mean, amazing. we have entire like now we have like entire groups where they're just, for example, one group that I'm active in is man, twenty seven brothers from the U uh, from the UK, from the US, and Canada okay. who are all in the creative space. We're videographers, we're photographers. Mm. We just share information, interact with each other, pass on jobs to each other. Okay, so we look out for each other. Yeah. but that's still a very small minority within the travel industry. Okay, like we all work in the travel space. Mm. All right. It's that's twenty seven brothers. <laughs> yeah, like, right, sure. Yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know twenty seven white guys here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it's good. You know, you have um, you know, the camaraderie. That's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. there. Okay, cool. Um, so you know, uh, back to the original point of uh, talking about this was that I started to question my blackness. But the funny thing is, when you grow up in the inner city, in your environment, you never question that. Mm. You never like, why do I think like this? Like, what? Why do I? Okay, why do I think all white people are bad? Why do I like you just do? Okay. Like you know, why do I think it's gay to dance? Like right, yeah, if I sure, want to dance, right. but I, my, I I fucking went to Argentina to learn how to tango. Nice. Like and you know, there are people like, oh that's white people shit, you can't do that. That's white people in Argentina? <laughs> yo, I went to Andorra to go skiing. People are like, yo, that's white people shit. Why are you skiing? Really? Black people don't ski. I literally just had Play this conversation hockey. the other day. I got an argument with a good friend of mine who's from Baltimore. Okay. Who basically he's a he's a barber. He uh it wasn't even an argument. <laughs> it was he's a barber. He cuts black people hair. He's he's Max is the best black barber in Bangkok. Uh, oh, okay. Shout out to Be More Barber. Nice, awesome, Fantastic. love it. We were talking about skiing, and he was like, "Black people don't ski." I'm like, "Motherfucker, what? What are you talking about? Black people don't ski?" And he's like, "I mean, I skiing." Yeah. I was, and I showed him like picture of the video, me right. skiing and snowboarding. Yeah. I was like, "Motherfucker, plenty of us <laughs> ski and snowboard." But you know, he's a Thai American. But there are okay. plenty of black people who don't think black people ski. Okay. Because if you look at mass media. Right, right, right. Still to basketball, this day, right. it's sport, football. basketball, football, yeah. right? But other than that, as far as like sports that we do, you, know, you got Venus and Serena, of course. You know, mm -hmm. you got Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you, if people so actually, what if Serena married a, a white dude, right? <sighs> Famous white dude, bro. Serena, I don't know who that is. Serena bro. Williams. Serena Williams, she's, the queen. She married the, uh, the she married the founder of Reddit. Reddit. Oh, yeah. god, I got it. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She's gorgeous. Alex. Oh yeah. my god. Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and you know, here's the funny thing. I still feel some kind of way about that. Really? So yeah. Let me, so you're grappling with your own questions of blackness. Yeah. And then you you dated white women, but you look at like Serena marry a white yep. guy, and you feel some kind of what? So why? It, it's not the conscious me. The conscious Eric is like, fuck, I don't, who cares? Like she's love in love with I'm yeah. upset yeah. that it's not me. Yeah, personally. Yeah, <laughs> but, sub, but subconsciously, it's re that this is why it's so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because we're taught to yeah, think this ingrained, way. Ingrained, ingrained. So when you here. fight yeah. with it, when you grapple with it, what like are, have you come to grips with it? Or are you still fighting it? I still fighting it. I don't think it's a battle that you're always because there's always like, yo, what up, brother? What? Up? Because as soon as as soon as I see another black man on the street, mm. it's the, we we hit the <laughs> nod. Okay. What's up? The grip up? You get like what's up here? Up? Like in Bangkok, yeah, walking yeah, down the okay. Yeah, it, it's like so. Like I met I met a, a hip hop artist here uh, oh. a couple of days ago. Cool, nice. uh, cool, cool, bro. Radio three thousand. Yeah, and he he was uh, for three years in KL, and he's been here for three years. Nice. Like he's he, he's brought, and we sat there first time meeting. We talked. We were sitting there talking like we had known each other forever mm -hmm. because we do know each other. He's from KL. He's from the states. Oh, he's from the states. Okay, he's American. Um, he's a, he's a um, uh, Cali dude. Okay. Okay. But we talk to each other like we've known each other forever because we know shared experience. We share. We know the shared experience because we being black in America. You that's the thing. You guys, if you're from Texas, if you're from Missouri, if you're from California, if you're from Florida, if you're from Boston, yeah. You got all five of you white guys have very different life yeah. experience. Yeah, I grew for up sure. 50 miles away from Mike. We yeah. had, I grew up in, I, I wasn't middle class. I grew up very poor. Mm. Uh, not super poor, but you know, not middle class. Not food stamps whereas, or anything. But... Whereas Mike grew up middle class. Black. If you grew up black in America yeah. in all five of those places, it's the same experience. Yeah. Uh, Foundationally, it's the same experience. Yeah, no, when I moved to San Diego, it was significantly different than Hingham, Massachusetts. The right, foundation, where, yeah. we, so that's why. Okay, we, so you know each other. That's we, cool. We all know each other, okay, right? Awesome. So you always constantly grapple with this. This the only way to not grapple with it is to reject it, mm. and you will never reject your blackness. It's who I am. Like mm -hmm. my phone, yeah, the sure. Core, is, it, core, is it who you are? The core of who I am. 
yeah. is a black man that grew up in America. Okay. Yeah, of that's course. The, the, but, but, but the lesson that I've learned, for example, have you ever heard me complain about anything? Yeah. The only shit yeah. I complain about is my are, diet. That is ridiculous. <laughs> and pizza. Like, <laughs> fun shit. <laughs> pizza. The I don't complain. No, I've never heard, especially like, this is one of the reasons I asked you to come and talk about like life in Bangkok, because there are yeah, a lot of weird. people in yeah. Bangkok who white, black, whatever, Ugh. hate life in Bangkok. They're mostly they, white. Yeah, mostly white. Yeah. They, they bitch it, like, like, they just complain about, yes. uh, and like for me, it was like, yo, uh, what what am I, it's, this is better than getting shot at. You chose this though. I chose yeah. this. So this why is, would you complain about yeah, it? Right, complain that's about the logic. But and, and it's like, it, it, it's, I, I always, like, look man, if, if I can't change it, Hey, I'm not going to even talk about it. There's no yeah. conversation for me to have about it. <laughs> right. Because I've already analyzed it in my head. Like, if you yo, can't control it. There's nothing no, you can. That makes yeah. sense to all us. We're preaching yeah. to each other's choir. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thing, Eric is on but, our vibe with, yeah. Yeah, with exactly. us and the strangelings. Is that sure. Eric's yeah. on that vibe. Mm-hmm. Is that you make the most of the situation, not complain about yeah. it. Or, or, or change it. Or change it. Or change it. Or, or change it. leave. I have or leave. I have the, the, Cambodia's right over the border. Yeah. Bags. I, 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 <laughs> bro, I, I'm down. Down. Going Here on. we go. Number you three. Know, we had a we were, we're we're having a conversation about uh veganism, vegetarianism. Mm. Bro, the responses I got from that video yesterday was <laughs> ridiculous. I have not had that many people respond to one of my IG stories in a while. Since Tony? Like even <laughs> positively or negatively? A, both. Like, really? so this okay, is what people t- I don't know if you saw the IG story. So basically yesterday I went to the uh, vegan slash vegetarian festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. And the initial first two videos, I'm like, oh, I don't fucked up now. I, I didn't know it was a vegan and vegetarian <laughs> festival. I was like, oh, I need a burger. Fucking hell, here we go. So I went in, but I stayed right. because that's mm-hmm. who I am. Yeah. Like, I'm like, fuck it, I'm here. I want to yeah. see what's up. And I, I go through and people were like, oh, I can't believe like you're bagging on vegetarianism. Uh, that's, and, that's his, for anyone who doesn't know, that's Eric's like default setting. But it was like, it started like, um, uh, one person was basically trying to convert me into veganism. Right. I've been trying forever. And I'm like, look, nah, I'm good. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah. I was like, I you keep telling people, me you're going to do a week. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do nah, this week. Pepperoni like, pizza. I'm, but, I'm pulling you away. But it's like, I'm, 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 I'm saying my, he was really trying to convert me. Okay. Okay. And, it was like this subtle conversion type <laughs> shit. And I was like, look, man, that's not like, look, I picked my heels to die on. And he was like, well, what are your it's heels? It's not going to have broccoli it's on It's not it. that. <laughs> yeah, and and no. I'm like, look, man, I, I understand. I 100% advocate for the idea that if everybody went vegan, the world would be a better place. At like, least less emissions, less carbon. Emissions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and food deserts. Less water. And, yeah. But like, I, it, yeah, scientifically proven. I love yeah. science. But that is not my struggle. That's not the struggle yeah. I choose to choose. Choose to fight. Yeah, right. I got other things going. I on. I got right. other shit to, yeah, right. to worry about. I, yeah. I have limited hours in a day and mm-hmm. energy, and I think this Focus is on. this is a foundational issue that a lot of people have. It's like, oh, you don't talk about trans issues. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm like, yo, I, I I will ride if you want me to march, and I happen to be there mm-hmm. with you. Yeah, sure. If you want me to say, hey, do you su- you support trans issues? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm not about to spend hours of my day yeah. fighting right. for this issue. Yeah. Like I have these other things mm-hmm. that I want to fight for. Priorities. You know, so for me, uh, like living in Bangkok, there's so much stuff here about this place, this culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're seeing a protest that aren't kosher, not okay, not cool. Yeah. But it's not my struggle to fight. Yeah. You know, people are asking me why I'm not out there covering the protest. I, it's not. Yeah, my, it's not too. my fight. Like, it's, no, it's not, not our story. To tell it's not my either. story to tell. No. And, and it's like, like any anything I do or say is going to be misconstrued as a political statement. Yeah. Potentially, no matter just my presence. Pro there. con. Yeah, yeah. Pro. exactly. And I'm like, that's not a place I want to be in because it's not my fight yeah. yet. And, and by the same token, like like we joke about the vegan thing because I, I don't yeah. eat meat, yeah. but I'm not out here trying to convert. Yeah, you're trying to convert. No, people. you like, never like, even said no, to me. No, like. Yeah. Dude, I, the, yeah. Jib eats meat all the time. I go out with yeah. you. I met you at a steakhouse, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like... And she's a little thinner than you. Yeah, yeah. a little thinner than me. Yeah, but, so. well, it's and a it, pizza. I mean, no and, judgment. And, and, you know, the funny thing is, uh, <laughs> and, and it's like when you, when, you, when you force, when you try to force narratives on people or converge, and we do it... No, they're going to push back no matter... Yeah. yeah. We have it, uh, like the black community here, we all, we're not all kumbaya. We don't mm. all get along. Yeah. We have these black meetups and we fucking argue about everything. Like, oh, this bitch is full of shit. Like just mm. because you're black doesn't mean mean like that. Like not, we say, it doesn't mean you're cohesive. You're not a monolith. Yeah, we're not mm. a monolith. And it was like uh, it was like just uh, skin folk and all kin folk. Mm. Like yeah, yeah, just because we all look like it's like you guys are racist. Yeah. It was like oh, you're just because he's white doesn't mean he's like hey, fuck that guy. There's a lot of white it's people. Same, I think are fucking lame. It's yeah. the same here. It's the same being a person of color here. So okay. like earlier yeah. earlier when I said that I don't speak for all black folks, I don't. However. 
a lot of our experience are foundationally shared. So let me tell you a few things that are uh, not good about living here in America. Yeah, God, do, I know people want to know. In yeah. general or just as a black guy? That's a black guy. Okay. Got it right. All right. So uh, one of the biggest issues here is romance. Uh, mm. If you're a black woman here, you are fucked. Okay. Good luck. Really? It's bad for yeah. sisters. Right. Because Asian men don't really fuck with you mm. like that. And usually the foreign men are dating Asians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So as a black woman, you have literally nothing to offer. Well, I mean, you got yourself. Like, whatever you bring to the table as a no, person. No, it's yeah, not that logical, dude. You know that. Go, well, I, 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 How do guys look I, I, at girls? There ain't nobody talking to you. Oh, she's got a good personality. Yeah, yeah. Fuck out of here. yeah while she's about? sucking my dick, maybe. Yeah, she's not, well, at about. the same time, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm saying, yeah. in actuality, I know what yeah. you're saying. You you are exactly right. I have yeah. a lot of sisters who are amazing women. Yeah. But I'm talking in yeah. general sure. yeah. general terms of dating here. This is saying the guy who's even an Asian woman. Even fat white women, they're not getting a whole lot of... No. Yeah. Attention over here. I mean, the African brothers. Oh yeah, yeah. you are into the fat ones. No, no, you're oh, saying I, the African, African brothers. Yeah. The African brothers. However, Nigerians, I am into big girls. The... Okay, I am into big girls. Okay, fine. however, the uh, Nigerian brothers and ah, yeah, yeah, it's they a better got life, it. man. I mean, Nigerian okay. Nigerian brothers or Af African continent brothers. Yeah, okay, they'll put the work on. So that first day that you landed here, not as a, a service man, but you're like, okay, then yeah. this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Were you? I mean, I was pretty impressed with the female. High opportunities where you like, oh my god, not really, really, not okay, really. so that I'm wasn't not, I'm not too high on no, no, no. A lot of people believe that it's like, oh, you go to no Thai women. I mean, they're they don't do it for I you. date, but if I have to choose, it's going to be Latina uh, sisters, uh, yeah, 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 okay, got it, yeah, or those thick bodied uh white women. And are they available to you over here? No, not really, they're not here, right? Yeah, and, that's and, and, and so many people ask me, oh, why don't you, why don't you date more black women? It's proximity. Yeah. It's just a proximity. There aren't any. If I lived in fucking Africa, I'd date only African women. Yeah, right, right. Like, sure, it's a matter sure. of I date whoever well, I'm around at that point. But you live in, in, in Thailand, but you uh, don't uh, date Thai women. No, no. And then say I don't date Thai okay. women. Okay. He definitely you're does. Talking about, <laughs> yeah, you're talking about like, oh, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. It, it, it wasn't that. that. Right, I was right, like, okay. oh, yeah, she's cute. She got a, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until I discovered Esau, and I was like, oh, shit. He's like, oh, shit. And they cook. Yeah, I'm right. moving here. Shit. <laughs> Eric's buying a house Ooh, in Uban Ranjitani. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to Uban in two weeks, Playboy. No. Uh, so, the, so, okay, so there's, so there's the romance imperfection. Yeah. So, the, 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 there's the issue. And, and, and as a black man, they'll fuck you, but they won't take you home. Got it. It is, really? it is easy to get laid here as a black man. It is ridiculously easy. And I'm not talking about paying for hookers. That's, yeah, no, that's like anyone. That's easy. easy. On yeah. top of it, it's yeah, easy. Right. Go, you can, as a black man, and it's not from a place of arrogance, I, I I think pretty much any Western black man can back up this statement. Yeah, I would say if you went out seven days a week, you could probably get laid three to four. Wow. Without trying. Without just really like, even trying yeah. too hard. Now, you right? said but, Western black but if you want to, So your yeah, buddies that are from Africa. They, they, like they're they, not... Yeah, they definitely get uh, romantically discriminated against. It. So let me ask you, though. Okay. So that's, because uh, but, but one thing, one quick thing. Let me explain what passing. Do you know what passing is? No. Drake passes for white. Okay. So historically speaking, passing was when a black person could pass as a white person. Okay. Drake is half black. He Got can it. pass as white. Okay. Um, I, pa I, I could never pass as an African. But you pass as a. I'm clearly American. Yeah. I'm American. Okay. That's my passing. So when people see me, they don't think African. They think American, American. British. It's a uh, huge Canadian. thing, right? It's a huge. Okay. So, um, like Wesley Snipes, he's African. If he was walking down the street, here, they would think African. They would. African. He's so dark. He's so dark. He's so dark. Okay. So, and his features. But I mean, but don't they also like know him from movies? Aren't they? Well, like, I, mean, no, but, but, I mean, somebody who looks like Wesley. Okay, Let's so it's a skin Wesley. thing. It's it's okay, definitely it. a skin and a features thing. Okay. Like, okay. It, it's a. Um, if you put me next to a native African of most descent, you, you can definitely see the difference. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Okay. okay. And and just the way we move and the way we vibe is definitely. So I pass. I clearly pass as an American. Mm -hmm. That so that gives me that leverage. Yeah. Um. There's a dip here, and 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 this is something that a lot. Of people got to talk about here there's a difference this is a culture that's built on need mm. most women need you yeah right. most women here need western men. Mm -hmm. um and there's also obviously a want if you can find a woman that wants you here holy shit. yeah right. you know as opposed to a woman that needs you. and that's something you have to navigate here, right, sure. here. and mm -hmm. like is she, is she with me because she needs me yeah or is she with me because she wants me? Mm -hmm. that's a very and not that's not even a black thing no that's talked a, about all the, western time. Man here. Yeah. all the time you know so as a as a black man, it tends to lean a little more towards the want, mm -hmm. the curiosity of it. Okay. Because 
I mean, white guys, y'all been here forever. You yeah. run around Thailand doing sure. what you want. But American black man, British black man, oh shit, what is this, this guy? New this cool. guy is the, still a rarity. He's like Jason Derulo. Yeah. I do TikToks there. <laughs> like, Jason Derulo. Like, like, oh, I love Chris his Brown. Music, yeah. or like, like, so it's like we're that new thing. Okay. We're that new toy. So when we come here and we go out, we go here, we go Phuket, we go to Pattaya, we go to Udon, Chiang Mai, Chiang, everywhere we go, we're the the cool guy. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So everybody wants it. So, so that's a good thing, though. But they won't take you home because of the okay. way the culture is built. So it's there. getting laid versus actually having a real so, relationship. So I want to ask about that because, so say someone, a black guy, wants to come here mm-hmm. and like, like move here, like live here, call this home, yeah. and then find a, a girlfriend, a partner, somebody who could marry. Do you think that's troublesome? Uh, yes and no. It's doable, but you're going to have to navigate the same thing every Western man navigates mm. is if she wants you because she needs you or she really actually wants yeah, you. Yeah, but the key yeah. to that is that every Western man, I mean, I went through the same thing. Does she yeah, want me for or every need Western me? Man. Yeah, yeah every Western man goes through that. Yeah, so that's not um, a color thing. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, you got to remember there are certain segments of this society you will never be able to crack. Yeah. Well, that's true for any Westerner. <sighs> no. You don't no, think it's so? Not. It's not. It's definitely not. A uh, high so, uh, a, a pale skin, high so, relatively wealthy white girl will be perfectly fine dating. That's true. I've dated dude. high so, mm-hmm. wealthy, pale skin, white, but as a, girls, as yeah. a black man, mm-mm. what about We're, the taking home? Taking. That's what I mean. Dating. Dating is taking home. Okay, you know, got fucking it. Fucking is fucking. Yeah, yeah. But right, dating, right. dating is taking home. Like if you're you like my friend Alex, who's Greek, this pretty motherfucker's a model here. Yeah, and he has his pick of the the choice. Like, yeah, it's, like. It's it's ridiculous, and he and we talk, and he he's like yeah, he was like yeah, because I'm a white dude. Yeah, like, I he fits every what every stereotype of beauty here. Mm. Yeah, like, like white white creamy skin, yeah. right? It's, it, all... it's having a baby with a white European dude is like hitting the lottery mm-hmm. for most Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Same with the Philippines. And it's like, but having a baby with a black guy, not, not you know, so it's much. funny when not I first so met much. Gracie, I mean, she had dated a guy before that was from the U S or whatever, but I asked her, I said, okay, so like, do you grow up like, Oh my God, Americans, like someday I'll fantasize about getting a visa or a green card or this or thing. She goes, no, she goes, it was so far out of possibility. She goes, I didn't even consider it. I never thought in the history of my lifetime or my family, I would ever have a visa. And it wasn't like, Oh my God, that makes me a horrible person. Yeah. It's just like, no, like I will never go to the moon. Yeah. Like, I just won't do that. It's not even in my, and so, but that was really interesting. But the whole, like, you know, want versus need thing, I think that's, that's really important. But, okay, so, so what about. Interesting topic to, to double click on. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Future point, yeah. yeah. So what about, like, some other things in the last six years? Oh, actually, yeah, what else think, sucks? Yeah. Yeah, I want to hear some more things that suck. <sighs> Ooh. From the Eric Prince perspective. It's I'm I'm a hunter. Yeah. Really well, I'm ain't. saying with us, like, uh, really hey, ain't. hey, Mike, hey, Dana, what do you guys hate about Bangkok? I mean, yeah. it really isn't. I mean, <laughs> not a whole lot. Yeah. Like traffic here, yeah. like, uh, I don't yeah, know. traffic. Yeah. But I take the train, yeah, so like, I, I no. take motorbikes. Yeah, so I I get so you know do you know a lot of older expats? Oh, oh I got one for you. I got um one of the one of the uh, one extremely important thing about being black is mm. having access to black culture. Other black okay. people, okay. Um, a specific kind of food, mm. um, kind of uh, music, Afro beats, for example. Mm. Um, what about haircuts? You mentioned uh, your buddy uh, haircuts, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Another, different. Gr- another great example. Um, having access to those things that cater to black mm-hmm. culture and history in Asia, no, it is not here. Zero. Bangkok is just here. I mean, I would say it was. It's funny, like those of us who came here within the last five, six to ten years, we're like we remember when there was no black barbershops here it was never say cut and they were still tied they just did they just cool didn't. cool squiggly lines and tie people's hair <laughs> but they kind of could do a fade mm. so it was like fuck like you didn't have any real hip-hop clubs it was mm. that mainstream hip-hop uh, but you had no djs who were spending real and underground now there are now there are like mm. i mean there's levels i mean these the, are super oh my god that's super uh, white oh, places super white. Right? yeah that's him great off. We get him off this show saying, no, dude, I, I don't go to these clubs. Like levels? Oh, so but old, that's my man. point. I mean, that's... But no, so you have, you know, like places like Sway, places like Penta, okay. Patea, you have 808 and Flex. Oh, I know 808. Um, yeah, you like have that, yeah. Afros that, that does Afro beats. Like, it, you used to have Marumba who did old school 80s and 90s hip hop. Oh, nice. Like, you have like so, golden era. like, golden era stuff. Like, that's you have, cool. uh, funk, uh, the, uh, you have uh, a Funkyville, uh, you have... Uh, you have uh, uh, jazz clubs. Mm. Yes, okay. like there's so much black music and culture here now. Okay. Um, in the past five years, that it's like you have access to it. However, it's not Atlanta. 
Yeah. It's Whoa, not, it's okay, that, but, but neither is San Diego. It's not London. But shit, San Diego has plenty of black culture in it. Yeah, but it's not Atlanta. But, but, but I'm, I'm just saying, to... but I'm just using Atlanta yeah, yeah, as an example, no, I get right? It, I get it. Uh, it's not New York. It's mm-hmm. not all these places Chicago. that have a history of, yep, yep. of blackness in them. You yep. know, it's not Paris. Not even Paris. You okay. know, you can go to Paris and get anything yep, black yep. you need. No, I've heard that. So that's, that's probably, true, yeah. that's difficult. I was talking to a sister yesterday and we were, she's been here five years and she was saying after the first year, she wanted to leave mm-hmm. because of that specific, there's no black people here. Like there's no black culture. You that know was I mean? the main reason, or was yes. like, what about the dating? What that, about the other I mean, things that, you that's, talked about? That's definitely part it of it. All weighed in, but that and not having access to black culture is a very big thing. Mm. It's a very big thing for a lot of people. For me, not so much. Like I prefer to all my. I if I live in Thailand, I want majority of my friends and interactions to be Thai. Uh, me too, uh, and that's what I was good. Like uh, I don't have this need for white culture. But because maybe that's you, because it just is here, is here and I don't take... But yeah, because it just is. Everything yeah. is white culture. I don't, yeah, I don't okay. know what I would consider. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm a kid from Rhode Island. I don't know what I would consider my culture. Yeah, everything's white culture, yeah, like for you. Yeah. So it, it's um, <laughs> like it's not that hard for you no, to see. Emporium is what, hard what, to... What, that's the thing. Yeah. Not, Netflix is my culture or what? I mean... Yeah. It's, not, it's not difficult as a white person to see yourself in every aspect of life here in Thailand. Mm. It's not difficult. It's not difficult for me to see myself in every aspect of life, no matter where I go. Pretty much. Yeah. I can just show up and they stamp me in yeah. and I'm good to go. But as a black person, you, a lot of times when you do even see yourself is in a ridiculous and stereotypical way. Okay. And, and, and I mean, and it's racist. Do you it's remember like, the man, Dunkin' Donuts commercial? Obviously. It's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. There. There's I like, don't... So... You mean we, we, commercial here? Yeah. Oh. So we talked about uh, like the standards of beauty with this Greek friend, right? Like, yeah. what's the Thai standard of beauty? It's white skin. Yep. It's tall. Sure. Well, that's they, not just Thai. It's all over the freaking world. I mean, but, they have this. Yeah, but Thai, white I mean, we're talking skin. about Thailand right now. They, they, no, they did a they did a black face Dunkin' Donuts charcoal donut yeah. commercial. Okay. They, I mean, they do that with detergents and yeah. shit here. Um, uh, skin with soap. Skin whitening, like, and and like you have to look at. Like when I go to the shop and get lotion, I gotta keep an eye. Like, is this white in this? Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Like, let me get like if it's a brand I haven't bought before. Like, yeah. it's like is it, is is it white? You know how no, hard it is to find is... something that's not white. Yes, I do. I hard. absolutely do because I like hard. my little tan thing that I got. But going. I mean, you know, uh, and, and and that's just I just threw the, these negatives out mm-hmm. there because I don't want anybody like, like oh, Eric just sugarcoating life in Thailand. All things being equal, Thailand is the best place in the world to be a person of color. Uh, that's outside of that. If, if you're looking for a place outside of the African diaspora. So right? after being here for a little while, just going back and forth, and now I live here full time, but like going back to the United States, every single time I would fly back home, just like you, you're like, oh, fuck, I just landed in New York City. When I would land in Los Angeles, first of all, I'd be like, this is a fucking shithole. Mm. Secondly, I'm like, how embarrassing is this? This is the first view of America people get. Yep. This, is, this is just offensive. Yeah. But I would go back, but then it wasn't just like the stuff. It was the people, yeah. the way they act that I'm like, I am so much more comfortable. Like, I, what about now you go back to Cleveland, for example, and you're like, Jesus, I, we're doomed. I feel bad. Yeah, I right. Feel, because it, but here, like here's they're screwed. Thing. I have such a love for Americans. Mm-hmm. I have a deep love. I love us. Yeah. I love us more than most Americans love us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have this deep love for Americans. But I think we're some of the kindest, most welcoming mm. people in the we're world. Best tippers we're in the world, amazing. that's for sure. Yeah. We're, we're, we are fucking dope people. Yeah, yeah. But I think we're also very emotional and we're easily swayed and confused and manipulated okay. because we're so fucking nice and we're oh, like, we welcome everybody. Like, well, yo, what's the up? Canadians are like, pretty damn nice. Yeah, Canadian, <laughs> man, that's fucking, fuck Canadians, man. <laughs> I fucking can't stand Canadians. <laughs> You're <time>. hilarious. <laughs> but I, 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 so when I go home and I see people stuck, mm-hmm. this is what, I, like, I'm like, yo, man, you don't even know what you don't know. Yeah, like right. the shit you're saying is because you just don't know, and it's not your fault. Mm. Like, but it, if you it, don't it, know, you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you don't even. And for years, I would beat this drum. Like, yo, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Y'all got to do this. And I'm like, come oh, on, the bad cock with me. They can never. They can mm. never picture. So you showed them because I. And that's why I shut the fuck up and just start doing my thing. So I want to give a real shout out quick to uh, my buddy Maurice, who uh, he's a Cleveland guy, and uh, he lives in Columbus now. And uh, he was excited about this episode because, like, he's kind of looking at his life and, like, uh, like what, like what options might hold in the future for him. So, just what, what up, Maurice? He's a creative and uh, he's a he's a tech guy as well out in Columbus. Yeah, tell him to reach out to me, man. Yeah, for I sure. Love yeah, Maurice, yeah. Maurice, hit up. Uh, Eric, yeah, hit me man. up anytime. Yeah. I'll help him with whatever. Yeah, he's a Cleveland guy. I think he's from. I don't know if he's from East Cleveland, but he's definitely a Cleveland guy. Yeah, cool, cool. But it, 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 it's it's really one of those things. Like when I go home, especially to Cleveland, man. Cleveland's hurting, man. Yeah, I was right. in Cleveland a few, and you know my whole family's still in Cleveland. Mm. You know, my oh, my okay. Mom's still there, my, All my your brothers sister. and sisters. 
Yeah, we had uh, two sisters who live outside of Cleveland, but everybody else. And they haven't like come here. Oh, I gotta go visit my big my, bro. Yeah, yeah. My mom, my, my my mom was coming. Okay. Uh, literally, everything was COVID. ready to go. They fucking. Yeah. You know, it wasn't even COVID. It was Ir- the Iran shit. People they, keep you were forgetting about that. For people, a bit, yeah, yeah, people keep forgetting about the whole Iran thing. We almost went to World War Three. People totally forgot about yes, that end of that year. I guess. But so all those flights were getting canceled. Got she was it, flying got in it, on yeah, Qatar. Sure. So, and then uh, we're like, oh, yeah. let's just hold her off and let's reschedule. Then fucking COVID hit. Mm. So my mom was supposed to be here like six months ago. But your whatever. brother's sister's like nope. never had any. Nope. But my younger sister was supposed to be coming with my mom. Oh, okay. And then she didn't even. So your make... brother came out. Yeah, uh, B. Weasel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon came out. Um, he's a, you know he's still in the military. Yeah. So, you know. mm-hmm. Almost uh, done, right? It, like, yeah, one more year, man. Yeah, yeah he's excited. He finished yeah. his PhD yet? Yeah, he's finishing. He's okay. finishing. Uh, he got he got the masters, but he started. He's, he was years. like almost done when yeah, he was yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, he's ready. He's ready. He's yeah, moving out here, right? Yeah, he's moving out here. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a great example. He had never been to Asia. Um, you know, he was in he had, he was stationed in Korea. Mm. He was stationed um in the states. He was stationed in Germany. Mm. Um and. For years, I tell him, "Come and visit me. Come and visit me. Come and mm. visit, visit me." So about three years ago, like he had got orders to Korea for a, a one year remote tour. Mm. I'm like motherfucker, you have no excuse not to go. You got to go. You have no excuse. <laughs> Five to go. hours, get on a plane. Yeah. Yo, yo, he came over. Within three days, he fell in love. Oh yeah. He's like, bro, I, he was this like, city does it, man. Yeah, yeah no, and, and, for it me, was it like, he, this, yeah. and and I, you know, I took him, I took him here. I was in the patio. Yeah. We went to Koh Samui. We went to Koh Phangan. Yeah, that's awesome. We went to Phuket. Like he was like, bro, I. He's like, man, that's I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm yeah. coming out here. No, he was like, I, I, I have to move out here. Yeah. And it's it's so, when you, it's and, and this goes back to the Cleveland, you know, how do I, you know, feel yeah, people when I go home. Yeah. I was like, yo, you don't, you just don't know what you don't know. Even if you watch the video, like, oh, I don't look that, I was like, it, it's something about being here. It's mm-hmm. the psychological Agreed. switch of not having to look over your shoulder, not worrying about police officers, being able to go into a restaurant, nobody's yes. looking at you crazy. Following like, you in a store. Nobody follow, like, man, I, I could go walk take a nap. Walk through Emporium, and, yeah. Bro, I could take a nap in a 7-Eleven, nobody's gonna fuck with me. No it, shit. Like, you could walk through like, yeah. Paragon, right? The only reason someone's following you is to make sure that they can help you. Yeah. yeah. Can I carry your bag? They wanna sell you yeah. something, like, absolutely, like, bro, dude. Bro, yeah. I, I've been, uh, fucking true story, I've been fucked up at four o'clock in the morning, sitting on the floor of a Seven Eleven, eating chips and ice cream. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like, oh yeah, he'll don't and, worry about and, it. He'll and sober up. And, 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 and nobody said. And they certainly didn't call the cops. Nope, nope. Yeah. They didn't call the cops. I got up, I paid, I walked, yeah. I walked yeah. stumbled home. Like it's, it's that's <laughs> outside. Like, that's some freedom. That's some. That's some shit. Like, New York, you might be dead. Yo, you yeah, might get shot sure. for that. Yeah. Like imagine, and and this is and and this is why it's so hard going home. It's because you go, you willfully go back into the the mouth of the lion, right, right, and just you know he sneezes and you're dead, you know. Like you, but here there is zero fear. I don't That's fear so anything awesome. here. Is, is My, there an adjustment period when you go back? Oh god, like a half the hour. Entire, you're like, bro, fuck the, this the place. The entire time I'm there, I'm like, what am I doing? How do I get out of here quicker? Can I change my flight? Yeah. Like, and I love my family. I, bro, sure, of course. I love my no, family. it's the environment, though. I mean, forget I it. Talk to, I talk to them. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. And this is the crazy thing. Like, I, obviously, I had none of those. Like, I, I never had to worry about, like, being killed, mm. right, in, in the U.S. Right. Just because of, like, some of the things Eric talked about. And, again, the difference between Broadview Heights and, and East Cleveland. Not yeah. that Broadview Heights is, like, the most fantastic place in the world, but it's not East to, Cleveland. It's not East <laughs> Cleveland. Um you know, but even when I go back, like I said, last time I was there was with Adobe. I was there for the think tank. And uh, and even San Francisco, I have friends there. Like, it's such a, a cool, chill place. But no, it's a dump. It, it's, it's the vibe is just yeah. not. Yeah. Bangkok is like, I think it's hard to articulate for me. It is. The magic that Bangkok brings. Like, New York City is an amazing city. It is 120th of what Bangkok offers. Yeah. yeah. And. Like until you actually experience it's it, it's so hard. It, yeah. it's, it's weird difficult. when people compare New York City to Bangkok. Like, we, I hate we, New York City. We can sit here yeah. and Love be Bangkok. like, but we yeah. could all sit here and be like, yeah, like we all get it. Mm-hmm. We get it. Yeah, yeah, but it's you can't. But it's like I always say that like, you can only compare Bangkok to a New York, a London, a yeah. Tokyo, like uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, and steroids. And, uh, like you, the, but but. Until you come here, until you end up down some random soy eating noodles on the side of the road mm-hmm. in the rain, watching dogs do cartwheels, mm. like for a dollar, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you, you can't, you can't understand it. No, and you it's can't not share even, it. and it's not just that. It, it's it's the it's the access to 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 life. It's mm. it's 
it's normal people doing normal people shit. Like when you're here in New York, there's a barrier. Hmm. You see a lot of barriers to entry to a lot of different things. Right. From a socioeconomic yeah, status. Yeah, sure. From a, Plenty just of stuff a, I can't a purpose like, oh, we're, but you come here, there is, there's almost nothing you can't do here. Right. I, I Bro, I hung out with the princess of Thailand a year ago. One of the princesses of Thailand at Sway eating chicken wings. Yeah. Right. She was just there. Nice. Like, I went to the opening of Paradise Lost. Like, I'm some broke black kid from Cleveland. They asked <laughs> me to come black. to this opening of uh, this major hotel with a bunch of Thai celebrities. I didn't right. know who anybody was. Yeah. They were just standing yeah. there. They were, like, getting hey, me, you want some they were literally just getting me fucked up. I, I, I've been to the Thai <laughs> premiere of movies. Yeah. Like, 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 you, like, you can't just roll into premieres of movies in the U.S. Like, it's world premiere. It's insane. Yeah. And, 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 and because there's no fear here mm. of that, like a premiere to us, like Tom Cruise, like somebody might try to kill that Tom Cruise mm. or attack him. That's not here. Mm. It's like yeah. the, the worst. I was out uh, with Mark Wiens. Yeah. Uh, you know, my I director. saw him on your IGS. Yeah, we were out. We were all out just hanging out at this food festival yesterday. And me and Mark were, me and Mark were sitting there talking. And every two minutes, somebody came up to take a picture with him. Well, He's an Air Force guy, right? Uh, is Mark? No. I thought he was an Air Force no, guy. I don't think so. His father. That's how he, he he grew up overseas. His father was uh, like a that's why he did all the travel. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why he did all the travel. Oh, I thought he was an Air Force no, no, guy. I think it's that. Okay. His dad was. We were just oh, talking about him earlier today. I mean, he's yeah. just such a wonderful person. So many people yeah. just love him. People don't even understand how great of a guy he is. Yeah. He it was like, is he really like that? I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, he's, he's exactly like guy. that in real life. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just standing, you know, we're standing there. My, and again, Mark Waynes is probably one of he is easily one of the most famous people on the internet. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right? And sure. probably, everyone knows this. And, yeah, <laughs> and it, and in Thailand, he one hundred percent is oh, the number one YouTuber yeah, in Thailand yeah, for sure, easily by and, far. And people were so kind and respectful. Yeah. Them, and people were like, oh, excuse me, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, people they, were so amazing. And, and it was like, and it happened. The shit happens to me too. Like, oh, I saw you on YouTube. I take a picture. Like, yeah, cool. Let's yeah, take yeah, it. Right, like, yeah. like vendors are like yeah. always trying to. And, and it was like, we were all in, um, it was me, my friend Rashad and Justin, all three of us black men, older 30s. And we were in, uh, we went down to uh, Soy Nana. Mm. Nana Plaza, but Soy Nana, where yeah. we'd like to go drink. Mm. It's, it's, it, by the way, Soy Nana is the best place in Bangkok to drink if you want some amazing cocktails. Oh, is, that, mm. is that why? Yeah, Wallflowers, um, uh, Asia Today, Teens mm. of Thailand, mm. um, uh, Bo Chow, all those are over there, right? And that's there. It's literally next to Chinatown. Okay. All right. So we were at uh, had some drinks and then walked ten minutes over to Chinatown. Yeah. Just to go get some food. So yeah. Good, he, my friend was like, "Yeah, I want the best Chinese food in the city." I'm like, "All right, fuck, easy. Let's go yeah. to Chinatown." Well, I gotta check that out then. Cool. And we walked. Oh yeah, yeah it's some great places. Awesome. Uh, so we walked over there, and it. I sometimes living in Bangkok, you forget how overly kind type people are. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially in a place like Chinatown, is normally just covered in tourism yeah. and traffic. Chinese. There was literally and, yeah. nobody there. Right. right? Yeah, that's and true. they had and interacted with a lot of mm -hmm. foreigners. And yeah. Yeah. So we come up and they're literally giving us free food. Yeah. Like, I'll try this. Like, <laughs> like, I, I wasn't trying to sell it. No, it was, that because happened to I, me too. Yeah. It's the same thing we experienced when we're outside of Bangkok for right. a normal yeah, time. For it's for like sure. how welcoming type people yeah. are mm. and how overly kind they are. It, it is it is what I grew up with, like the kindness that I remember people being in, like in the States, like, yeah. you know, the non-racist people. Mm. But it's a kindness that I recognize, yeah. you know, and, and I appreciate and I welcome. It's, it's like, man, these people are genuinely happy and excited for me to be here. Mm -hmm. And as a black person, it's very difficult when you grow up in America, where, it's, where you're constantly being told you're not welcome or mm. belong here. And I'm like, yo, we helped build this shit. What are you, why are we not welcome here? This is my home too. But, you know, racist presidents now, mm. they're happily, happy to tell you how much mm, he's you're a jackass, not welcome. Sta stand it, back and stand by, Proud Boys. It, it's, yeah. it's rough, you know? And it, it was like, but coming out here, man, it, it, lets you, it lets you look at the good and the bad in people and, and decide what's, where you want to be at in life. Like, who I want to be when I grew up. Yeah, you were talking about, like, you, how you love America, right? And yeah. like you love Americans. It's, it's weird because I, I feel the same thing, right? I feel this in living out here is amplified that to the point where I, I really am happy that I'm an American, mm -hmm. right? And I love America. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's this crazy juxtaposition in me where it's like, well, I also, there's a reason I don't live there. And there's yeah. a reason when I go back, I'm anxious to leave. There's plenty yeah. of Americans that I don't like. Yeah. yeah. 
no, no. But, but the, the country itself, the, the yeah, culture itself, sure. there's a lot of things about it I love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that is amplified for me being yeah. here. Well, appreciation. But, but yeah. like I said, the, the anxiousness to leave yeah. when I'm there is strong. Well, I, I, said that, I, I said this recently. I was like, look, man, I can disagree with somebody and still love them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's what people, it was like, yeah, disagreement does not mean hate. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's one of the biggest cultural problems we have globally now is like, yo, I don't agree with this. So it must mean that I hate you. you Unfriend know? me. Absolutely yeah, not. I was like, no, <laughs> like, like, I think you're fucking crazy, but I love you anyway. Yeah. Like, and that's what it's like being an American. It's like we do a lot of messed up shit globally. But we've done a lot of amazing stuff. Yeah, true. Right, and true. people really forget about that. Yeah. Like from, from medicine to education. Electronics. To and, pop culture yeah. to inventions. Improving like social life. media. Pop, we invented pop that culture, shit. yeah. I mean, right. just, right. um, where does American pop culture not just completely, no, completely. Uh, dominate? Globally. Yeah. Globally. Like K-pop. Come on, y'all. Y'all know who invented K-pop. Yeah. That was us. Like literally. <laughs> you just why, amped it up a little. Yeah, but right, but yeah. not even, it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even Koreans. It was the white dude who went over there. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was the Princess of Lula. Yes, he created K-pop. But, but sorry, K-pop is kind of cranked up to the oh, pop. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's you see the, they the, put their twist on The number on it, one yeah. movie on Netflix right now in Thailand is that Blackpink movie. Oh, I'm not surprised. Love oh, K-pop. my God. Gracie's yeah. daughter that, loves Blackpink. Like, if girl, I don't know about Blackpink. Bro, oh. I, 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 uh, so, uh, you know, I've got this big-ass TV now, right? i got this big-ass 6 inch TV. So <laughs> Good job. I saw you bought that. That's yeah. dope as fuck. <laughs> it's on my wall. It's the greatest shit of all. How far away is it? Bro, it's, it's like, like it's this glowing. light up the whole living room. The whole wall. <laughs> it's like glowing out the window. <laughs> so I walk in. I walk in, right? And this is gonna sound racist as fuck. But I walk I walk in and it's you know how Netflix when you're not watching it, it does like Yeah, the red shirt. Sure. Yeah. So it was black pink and I was looking at him, I'm like, oh, all their hair is different. And I'm like, fuck, that's the only way I can tell K-pop apart because their hair is uh, different. One okay, of those chicks yeah. is Thai. The black pink girl, one of them is Thai. They She's like the, the, the most famous Thai person right now. Like the, really? all the, like, I was like, man, they were like, like boys wearing makeup. Like, is that a girl? Like, does that make me homophobic? Yeah, I don't they, know what's they, going they on. They do kind of look I'm like, so like very pretty boys. Some the, of the K-pop Yeah, exactly. People. Even like, it's like, the, the girls look like really pretty boys, but the boys look like really pretty. Like yeah. Really pretty and this girls. is just a new pop band. They'll be great for like three or four years, yeah, and, and then the next one will yeah, come. Well, that's up. how K- K-pop's like a grinder, man. It's just like, yeah, bro, yeah it's a machine. I'm, I'm never, sure. But it's, it's, you know, it, it's one of those things, man. It's, it's such a, if I lived in the States, I wouldn't know what none of this stuff is. Yeah. Man. You know, it's funny. I talked to a but <laughs> yeah, you probably K-pop? have this. They know K-pop in the it's, U.S., It's right? popping now. It's, yeah. I mean, it's coming like out of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, K-pop bands. That big one, the guys, the BTS Yeah, Yeah, BTS. Yes, is yeah. That, when I say that, they think, "Oh, that group." I'm like, "No, the train." train. Yeah. I, I, I was on t- I was on, I was on Twitter and I said some shit about BTS. BTS, <laughs> BTS and the I guess they they hit some record in the U S. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was I said a joke. I was like, "Man, I was like, man, these are some really pretty girls." Right. Like it was just a joke, bro. They came for my ass. Really? The beats, because it was like a really big account and it was uh, tagged. Okay. So when I tagged it, the t- people. Oh, yeah. I was like, "What the fuck happened on my Twitter?" His phone just living. scrolling. Bro, I never gone viral before. <laughs> that. It was me talking shit about, talking BTS. about yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, fucking K-pop, Who, man. Who's this guy in Thailand? Let's get How him. How dare he? He's they, losing his blackness I for was one. Like, yeah, clearly. Like, he knows about K-pop. <laughs> shit. It was crazy, man. But man, I, overall, man, if I could say really anything to any young brothers watching this, at least Well, not just young brothers, right? Like any yeah, any brother. Any shit, age. Honest, to be honest. If like you really want to find yourself if you really want to have an opportunity because you know because the thing about being black in america is you're constantly told who you are mm. like this is how black men move this is what they think and this these is are your what limitations this is your limitations like. but abroad you have opportunity to figure it out for yourself mm. if you want to take fucking ballet classes nobody's going to look at you twice like if you want... how do you get people to believe you i mean it sounds like the catalyst for you or maybe the first, was the not, military it, it, it's 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 not that is not my job no, I'm just this. curious. I mean, I'm no, not saying. No, 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 no. That's my answer to this because it's something I've had to struggle with for years. Because right. I asked myself the exact yeah, same question. How did I get? Um, how do I, you know, how do I get people to believe me when I say, "Oh, this is amazing"? Mm. How do I ju- clarify or justify this yeah, or show them? That's yeah. no, not my job. That's fair. Like, like, look, lead man, a horse to water, right? Yeah, exactly. 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 It was like, look, man. All I it, it, and Maurice, okay. like you said, Maurice was his name, right? Yeah, Maurice. If Maurice reaches out to me and says, uh, yo, Eric, uh, you know, what are the steps I should take? Mm. What do you think? I will have no problem with getting on a phone call with him, doing a mm. video chat, and and explaining to him how I did it, how he possibly could do it, because mm. I've done this thousands of times for yeah. other brothers, right? I would say, let's cut the number down. Let's say I've done 100. 
Mm. Face Maurice calls. Maybe five have actually done. Mm-hmm. It. Yeah, and it was funny. I was at a club. Well, it's I, scary though, too. It's I mean, a very scary thing, especially I, when you realize that you could do it. Yeah, yeah. I think then it becomes even scarier. Yeah, yeah. And it becomes scary because now you have to do some shit. Yeah, you actually have to do some shit. You know, mm. it, it it's easy to blame others. Because, but and here's the thing: this is not just a black thing. Yeah, it's right. really easy to blame others for your laziness. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. we yeah. talk about this all the yeah, time. Real sure. easy. It's like, oh, I'm uh, like, it's funny. Uh, I'm gonna post today. I was at um, I was at the mall. They were doing a Pokemon thing. Okay. And nice. I was walking around. I was like, yo, I will be a millionaire if my mom hadn't thrown away my Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, but the funny Best thing is, playing cards. But one of my good friends, yeah. Lee uh, from university, he's a he's the biggest Pokemon YouTuber in the world. Wow. wow. That's what he does. Yeah. That's he crazy. does, uh, you know, One Piece. Yeah. He does the voiceover, the American voiceover. Oh, really? That's yeah, awesome. Lee. Yeah. It was like, yeah. it was so funny because I look up one day, I was like, yo, Lee, yo, is this you? He said, yeah, that's me. I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't even know. <laughs> but, but it was like, because he did that. Mm-hmm. Like, he, it had nothing to do with his raise or his. Right. He just he, did it. Yeah. He just did that. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it, it's like, like, I'm going to talk shit. Like, yeah, if it wasn't for my mom. But yeah, like one of the, it's it's and this is one of the negative things about growing up in America, but in our culture, it's ingrained in us that we can't succeed because we're black. Mm. It's like the system tells you, like, and even in our community, it's like, man, that's, black people don't do that. Mm. Yeah, black black people don't do this. And I'm like, what? I could be the greatest skier of all fucking time. No, black people don't ski. Yeah, they said that even their barber was like, no, they don't. And you're like, let me show you video. Yeah. This is that we what you said kind of hits a chord with us because we talk about this on the show a lot. There are people who do. And there are people who complain about people who do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was, that watch. Uh, it was like uh, you know, uh, Will uh, Will Smith, Dwayne and Rock Johnson, Kevin Hart. Those are three of my favorite people. Mm. And it's not because any of the content they produce is particularly great, in my opinion. Yeah, The Rock um, is kind of goofy, right? Uh, uh, oh, The Rock is amazing. Come on, no, Pain and Gain. No, no, no. no <laughs> best best no, movie ever made. No, 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 no. <laughs> but but it's like when I I am. Like I would say, let's say um, Will Smith, who w- he's was, very talented. He's a great actor. He's Jesus. a fantastic actor, but on social media, he's not, not a great YouTuber. <laughs> he's not a great YouTuber. His, his YouTube shit is terrible. But when I look at these guys, it's I never hear them complain, yeah. mm-hmm. and I always see them working. Like yeah. they are always working, and it might be some of the corniest shit I've ever seen, but they're always yeah. working on yeah. something. They're always grinding and trying. You know, mm-hmm. on Instagram, if you are like hashtag The Rock. There's like countless people taking photos of the rock in the gym at like 3 a.m., 10 p.m., like midnight. Mm. Like it's he, this, he gets that work no matter where he is. It, it's a constant, and, and and it's this, and it's not even not even just the gym thing. It's this refusal to be to 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 be lazy. Yeah. Mm. Like and and laziness is such a drug. It's so much fun to sit on my couch and watch next watch next. Now with sixty five inches, inches of TV. Oh, you need to never bro, leave. It's fucking beautiful. I'm scared. <laughs> Yo, I play Red Dead Redemption. Is, is it too? curved too? No, 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 no. I'm not that fancy. It's I, I play Red Dead Redemption <laughs> to the left. And I, I, I'm afraid to install it. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to start it up again because I know what's going to happen. It's like a on drug. TV. I'm gonna be. I'm, oh, I'm not gonna never move. Never leave it. Have you seen the Red Dead Redemption two? Uh, the Rockstar mixed universe theories. Yes, Ooh. yes, oh. yeah. With GTA. Like, so yeah. I, I watched it. I, I went down this rabbit hole, and someone's like playing Rock uh, Red Red Redemption Two, and they're like, <laughs> "Oh, this is the thing from GTA." I'm like, "Oh, I gotta stop this because yeah, I'm I, gonna I be." But it's 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 like uh, what laziness. It, it it's it's a drug. Yeah, and in a lot of a lot of ways for a lot of people's lives, mm. it's taught. Mm. Like you're you're taught how to be lazy, mm-hmm. how to do the bare minimum to get by, yeah. just kind of stay under the radar. Well, it's like it's, like it's a reward, mm-hmm. yeah, for me doing a whole bunch of nothing yeah. really. But I, now at least I get to sit it's, on my it's ass. Like, it, it, it's 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 you know it's like the idea of a rest date when you're working out. Mm-hmm. Like I find it fucking ridiculous to me. Like it, it's so like, like the cheat day when so you're on a TRT diet. TRT Eric. TRT Eric. <laughs> you left every motherfucking day. Every day is arm day, motherfucker. Every, every day is arm day, motherfucker. It was like, grow, motherfucker. I fucking love him. I yeah. love CT. I love CT so much. It's always like, and, and CT is a great, great example. CT Fletcher, the bodybuilder. Yeah. Is when he go, he's like, yo, is your, is your set? Yeah. Like, it's always your yeah. set. Yeah. Like, you, you only grow as big as you work. Mm-hmm. What do you say? It's still your set, motherfucker. It's still your set, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Why yeah. are you complaining? It's still your goddamn set. Bro, it, it's, I get so frustrated when, what I start, for one of the few times I just started to ignore somebody, guy, brother reached out to me for advice. He go, the question was, 
uh, it was something about, hey, uh, what are your tips of, about traveling? This is a guy from America. Yeah, American, you know, <laughs> brother. Uh, it was something along that was a very vague question. I was like, um, yeah, like, give, oh, like, like what Start. tips? <laughs> like, what's what tips would you give uh, somebody traveling as far as like not to do? Like, watch mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you gotta be a little more specific for me. Like, like, like ask more specific question. Like, what mm-hmm. do you like as far as the travel journalism? What countries to go to? What food not to eat? How not to get beat up? Like, mm-hmm. like, be a little more specific. And we went around and around and around. It was this thing like, yo, it came. I came to a conclusion like, yo, this guy wants to be spoof and yeah, information. Right. He wants you to do it for him. Yeah, things that I've worked so fucking hard over the years mm-hmm. to master and cultivate. You want me to spoon feed it to you for nothing, right? And I'm okay with that. Like, if somebody came to me and said, hey. Um, I did a little research about moving abroad. I narrowed it down to these five countries. Which one do you think? Yeah, is pluses better? and minuses. I'm one hundred percent gonna help Correct. that person. Yeah. Yeah. But if somebody says, "Hey, what country should I move to?" <laughs> no, I get that too. Well, on my here's channel, the yeah. other thing, and yeah, and, and I'll say this: um, like we we obviously all love Bangkok. We feel a resonance with this city, mm-hmm. right? And I, I think what we're saying is, don't come to Bangkok. Find your Bangkok. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. 100%. It, it, Bangkok is not going to be for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the pe- people who hate Bangkok, when they talk to me about hating Bangkok, these are all things I don't like also. Mm. Like, oh, I get it. Like, like, But I've chosen, it was like, this is, traffic is a great example. People are like, fucking, tra-. I, I tell people, don't do drive. not get in a car between 3 p.m. and 7 in yeah. central Bangkok. Because yeah. you ain't going nowhere yeah, quick. Yeah. Like if you the same thing with Los Angeles for Christ's sake. I mean, I it's the same like, thing with Cleveland. You move around. Is it really? You, yeah, that yeah, traffic yeah, there bad. too. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cleveland's that. pretty bad. You trying to leave uh, the Austin. city at three p.m. Yeah, Austin. Austin. But here's the thing: mm, none yeah. of those cities have an amazing SkyTrain exactly. and subway system. Right, we right, have right. boats. We have boats. Dude, we have all the bro, clongs. Can, bro, that's so fucking awesome. I can rent a whole fucking boat for five dollars. How about yo? How about this? You can thousand baht. How about this? You, you this. can jump on the back of a scooter for a dollar. Yeah, right. And it will take you un- much un- unlimited amounts of space no, dude, through eight traffic. Bot. Eight baht to get yeah. over. Oh this. yeah, the big red, the song tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The song tell. It's, it's awesome. Like it's it's it. This city has so many options, mm-hmm. and you know people who who hate it. But but you know with that said, this yeah. this is our opinion. Right? Yeah, right. Hop sure. on a boat, song tell, motorbike, choir. whatever. I know people who who refuse to get on the back of motorbikes, right? So. If we go, if you step back and somebody says, "Oh, I hate these things about Bangkok," I'm, I shrug my shoulders. Okay, Bangkok's not my place to defend. Yeah. Right? Find but your Bangkok. Find your place. Mm-hmm. Find that place in the world that speaks to you. I know people who love the small vibe of Vienna, right? Yeah. Like Vienna, I could never live in Vienna, but it's a beautiful city, and I'm there. And people talk. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get mm. why you love it because yeah. it's you. This is this is a mm. thing for you. Find wherever you go. One of the problems, though. Is that uh, and, and particularly for people of color from a low, lower socioeconomic uh, background, they cannot experience. I've been in ninety five countries because it's what I do for a living. Mm. I'm blessed that way. You've been in ninety five for a minute. Like you've been really yeah. slow this year with yeah. your travel. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, something weird about this. <laughs> I've been a weird. Why are you coughing so much? Yeah, yeah, something God. weird about this year. And it was. Uh, Let me take your temperature. And it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Bend you, over. You, you want to hear, hear a funny story? Yes. You want to hear a funny story? Of course. No, I thought I had HIV. No. What? Like yesterday? Wait, wait, this yeah, is like this since the first time you were here with me. And- this, this is how you start a funny story. I, I I had HIV. Why? What? 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 What, what prompted you to do your man. dick? Fucking oh, animals. Jesus! We, we, expanding did, we, your did, mind. Did we just had a conversation about animals. Fuck! I got a, we got a new batch of animals heads. <laughs> and, uh, this is why I don't fuck with Eric on these animals. Clearly, <laughs> you're gonna walk away with the hive, <laughs> bro. I, I, bro, I'll tell you, I, I, so I need, I need, I need them to sleep, right? I've been having trouble sleeping lately. I need them. I, I thought I had a sleep. heart attack. Turn when off I took your it. goddamn TV. <laughs> It'll get darker in your living room. You'll be able to fall asleep. Like, I thought I needed to sleep. I thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> Oh, this is the five gram cookie yeah. story. Jesus, you almost killed my friggin' co-host. I had, so I take one five gram, right, and before bed, but and then I start doing some other shit like cleaning, moving around. I always take it before, like thirty minutes before I'm going to go to sleep. And then you, so it hits in got it. when okay, I'm gone. Cool. So good for recovery too. Yeah, by the way. really good for recovery. And then um, for some dumbass reason, I decided to take another one. Mm, sure. <laughs> so now because well, if I'm one's t- good, trust me, I know that behavior. So That's why I can't in, have any. Like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. So I lay down, and that shit hit me quick. Okay. So um, it was you know rainy seasons now, so um, I get caught in the rain yeah. like, coming from gym or on a motorbike everywhere. And I get like <laughs> a little yeah. cough, right? I'm laying in the bed, and I'm like, I'm just laying there with my eyes closed. I go, <laughs> and then 
literally every scene from every TV show and movie where somebody got <laughs> HIV God. played back in my head. <laughs> the scene from that with the waterfalls, the, the and, music video with the picture they got. <laughs> bro, I, I, will, I get up and I'm standing, I'm standing butt naked in my room with the light looking at my hand. Trying to see if there's blood from my cough in it. Oh my god! <laughs> then dude. I lay back down, and I you're like Freddie Mercury. Oh my bro, god! Bro, I was laying in bed. I made a fucking doctor's appointment for the next day <laughs> <laughs> to get an HIV test. Why were you recently with some crack whore bro, that was like shooting bro, up? I thought about every unprotected oh, sex god. I had in the last decade for the because. Love. They say it doesn't show up sometimes for three years. You can years have it for shit. six months and never know. Bro, bro. Every fucking okay. propaganda on HIV. So really. knowing the result of this, let me guess, you're still going to have an edible tonight. Yeah, I probably am. Yeah, because you're like, what's the worst thing yeah, that can yeah, happen? I, got, I already thought I had HIV. I get these yeah. HIV doctor appointments every friggin' morning for some reason in my calendar. Right, I don't know why yeah. this is I, a repetitive. I, I appreciate the money, but you only got to come to office. Jesus, man. Yeah. Go to Eric, what are you doing after you leave here? Oh, man. Bangkok strange man. Yeah. clearly <laughs> they got yeah. strange. Man, those, i'll tell you dude those that that's not not five milligrams oh oh, oh fyi yo she got, <laughs> yeah i gotta talk to you after <laughs> off, off camera okay about, that's uh, probably a wise so, idea so yeah. last time we we're on a live stream we were talking about i told this story and my buddy maganj throw, sends me a photo of a thousand milligram brownie I'm like dude oh, but, would you die i would shit. obviously no would the average person die though no. i mean he's like yo you just take like a little a bite. gram no oh, a whole gram a hundred why would Thousand milligrams. Oh, how big is this fucking brownie? This is this big. How did he suck the size of He that? bought it. So you gotta remember, you guys aren't drug addicts. No. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, I like never bought stuff. anything less than, than pure Peruvian cocaine. Yeah. Fuck. And I bought literally pounds of it. God damn it. I am I I don't have the ability to do one cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like 110 percent, 80 miles an hour until yeah, I yeah. die it's or like, run out. A yeah. baker's dozen. Yes. I had to stop. <laughs> yeah, and that, and it's funny. The El, this is another drawback about being black in Bangkok. Okay, you get a lot of free drugs here. Oh, uh, they think because. Yeah, because it's cool. It's like, I wanna, I wanna, yeah, I wanna, but you're uh, out clubbing and stuff hey, like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. hanging out at a co-working space. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, not. Yeah. They're like, hey, dude, can you like sign my? You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Here is like, you know, oh, exactly. Yo, I get called Snoop Dogg all the time. I don't look shit like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. Look, I'm like, bitch. Like, oh, you look like Snoop Dogg. Yeah, he's like I'm seven like, feet what? tall and you're eighty like, pounds. No, actually, I'm fucking Obama. I'm like, like, what, what are you talking about? about? Like, I'm every black. I've been Obama. I've been The Rock. Wow, I've been, good for I, you. I, I nice that work, I've been working yeah, totally. out. Totally. Like, I've, I've been Snoop Dogg a lot, Steve Harvey, uh, Chris Tucker. Steve Harvey. Uh, Did you else? get something wrong? And they're I like, okay, gonna, yeah. Steve Harvey. You're like, are you oh, judging me? I get Beauty <laughs> Queen. Whenever I wear a suit, I get Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. And ball uh, hair. You gotta, stop, you gotta stop letting Jay dress you. No, Jay's <laughs> fucking. But it's, uh, you know, and, and, and really, this is, and, and I'm being, and this is funny, but I'm being all serious. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of young brothers come out here and they get themselves in really bad situations mm. because you come here and really it's wide open for you. You can, you can really do whatever you want. Yeah. And a lot of us don't have that back home. We don't have the, the, the money for it. We Kid don't in have the candy time. store kind it, of thing. It really is one yeah. of those things. Like, so here, um, you know, you go to a club, you go to a bar, you're getting offered Coke, mm. you're getting offered X, you get offered E, much, you get offered this and and most of uh, free more so as a black guy more like you like got white buddies really, that don't really that doesn't happen more so as a black guy. i've never really, been offered well really a lot n n well eric gave me free edibles but i've never yeah. been offered you know, like uh, just chick, coke yeah. by like some random person yeah it, it, it it's it's out here is yeah. that big here is that bigger here i mean obviously one of the things that i sort of associate with i guess it was someone's gonna say inner city is mm -hmm. high drug use yeah. cr high crime is that yeah. fairly accurate really like big. where you okay yeah. so what about here yeah. I mean, is it okay? Yeah, sir. Um, but it's more designer drugs here. Um, you get a coke, lot, a lot of coke, a lot of X, okay. a lot of coke, and then you have you know crystal like yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the heavy shit, but um, the the more you go out every night, and you'll likely see it is a uh, coke X. And, okay. You know, uh, Opioids we, as big here as they are back home? No. Okay. No, no, yeah. no. Um, you get a uh, and, but a lot of people like a lot of people smoke like like we uh, mm -hmm. normally do it at home. Like, okay. Both we you only see like. I, I remember, like in in New York and Cleveland, you walk down the street and you smell weed. Yeah, yeah that's not that's a big everywhere. Right, right. Yeah, that's not really a big. Thing San Francisco, yeah. everywhere, yeah, yeah, especially now that it's legal, right? Yeah, I mean, not just, big, yeah. And, I, and it was so funny, you know, it's legal here. Mm. Um, and and, and ish, it's legal ish. Well, I'm getting my prescription next week, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's legal now. And it's, yeah, it's easy because of your eyes. It's a thousand bucks. Glaucoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, you got glaucoma. I wondered why you were. No, no, insomnia. 
Insomnia. Yeah, oh, yeah, obviously. Insomnia. I can't sleep. Clearly. Um, uh, Why? Well, yeah, that's cookies. actually true. I got this giant 65 inch light in front of me. I can't understand why I'm staying awake. But it's, um, you know, it, having access to designer drugs, um, that, I mean, it changes the party. You know what I mean? It really does. Yeah. You're talking to a guy who, what did oh, you say, $6,000 a week in blow, Mike? I mean, 6000 a month, yeah. A month. Yeah, was, At age 21. It, changes especially and, and you know you got you're out here fucking models man that's what we're yeah. fucking models and like that was like my stars, dot-com like, life in the 90s yeah mm. but we Model have that, girlfriends yeah. we yeah. have that in 2020 now like it, it's and and and, and i'm even, married and got sewing machines so yeah it's like, you do <laughs> you sweatshop downstairs it's terrible no bro i i want to invite children. you to ship i know you're gonna say no i'm like ah oh, fuck it but it's like you pull so so for me um there was I I I'm just coming off really like Tony when we mm-hmm. did the interview with Tony. Yeah, I was in the middle of my bender. I was mm-hmm. I've been on like a three month alcohol drug fucking bender. I fucked everything that moved. I was doing all the drugs. Is that good or bad? <sighs> or are you just having fun? I, it, it's I was having fun. Yeah, but it didn't hit me until a couple weeks ago that you it, were doing it. Like I didn't realize it. Okay. I didn't really come to because I saw. So I'm a bigger dude. So it you takes like a two ten two fifteen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So it ta- it takes a little more for it to hit me. Okay, right? yeah. That's right. So I'm going, you know, one for one. I'm going shop for shop with my friends. Yeah, who are tinier, smaller than me. Yep. And I saw them fucked up. And when I saw it, I was like, let me pull back and keep babysit. Yeah, yeah, on on yeah. I get it. And I was out with them, and we go out, and it was fucking chaos. It was like we should all be dead. Okay. Kind of shit. Like how I'm, much? What do you do? I mean, you, uh, one this, edible is this, nothing. This but. night was uh, alcohol and X. Okay. It was that night. How much? And, uh, and Coke. Um, like a lot. Of five, X. six. Pills? Like six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five yeah. or six X. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throughout the night. Throughout mm-hmm. the night. That, that's still a lot. It was a lot. Uh, and uh, Coke. How much? Uh, before we even went out, three, four lines. <laughs> Yeah, before we went out. Before lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all relative. Yeah, yeah, it's all relative, yeah. right? And five or six X, which are probably yeah, mostly yeah. Coke, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're no, before I, before not... I go out, six, uh, seven grams. Because three and a half yeah. grams is an eight ball. Two yeah, eight yeah, balls yeah. before I go out. <sighs> Absolutely. 110%, 80 miles an hour. Shit. I don't, I don't know. Seven about grams. Mm-hmm. So it's, but, but, I, but, but again, I, I, have a, a drug I have a friend that is at that level. Really? Know? And I didn't, I didn't notice until that night. Mm-hmm. When, and mind you, I, I didn't do it in lines yeah, because I was right. babysitting. I was like, I'm just yeah. take a few drinks sure. because every other time I was fucked up too. Yeah. And I'm with them and I'm looking and I'm seeing the altercations and getting into oh, the sure. anger. Oh, yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm diffusing the situation. I'm like, yo, I apologize. Let me buy your He's not overly Excuse telling the me. truth either, probably. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I was like, this is us. And you were and, 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 in and the mirror. It, it was that. It, it really was like I'm not that dude. Mm-hmm. And one of my one of my friends, uh, one of my friends, he has a favorite son. He's like, "What the fuck are we doing in our life?" Mm. But jokingly, yeah, sure. Correct. Jokingly, he's like, "What mm. the fuck are we doing in our life?" And it's like our thing. Like, what are we doing in our life? We just have fucking teachers, right? Yeah. And I was really sitting there, like, the past three months, what the fuck have I done with my life? The past three months, okay, like party they, dress, o- huh? they, they opened they opened Thailand back up to us, mm-hmm. and we took full advantage of it. Yep. And I felt a little responsibility to, you know, because I get messages daily on my IG, on my YouTube channel, on my blog, mm-hmm. saying like, yo, man, I'm living vicariously yeah, through you. I like, man, we can't too. do nothing, but sure. you gotta go and to I'm the like, beach, man. Like, All right, fuck yeah, I'm with mm-hmm. you. I got you. Yep. So I'm out here showing the life. I'm yes. like, yo, I got you. This for you guys taking shots. But I didn't look at the toll it was taking on my body, mm. taking on my mental, yeah, mental taking on my yeah. work, sure. taking on my relationships with other people. Okay. Like, there's a girl who I like a lot. Okay. Like I really should slow down, and if she had found out the shit that I was doing, even though we're you know, like, not boyfriend and girlfriend, sure. like she she wouldn't be happy. She's like, yo, yeah, like, right. this ain't you're not my guy. This ain't the life for me, mm-hmm. you know. So I was like, yo, man, I'm really doing, I'm reckless. So I was like, yo, uh, October, I'm done. Yep, uh, October, I'm not like. And again, I'm like, come November, I'm probably gonna like have a couple cocktails. Like, yeah, but dude, you're not. Yeah. But I can't do that bender shit no more. I, and, 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 good for you. And part of it is I feel like I have a responsibility to young brothers, young sisters, and, and, and anybody who, who's looking to get out, to okay. escape, to, yeah, right, exactly. to, to, to try a different lifestyle, yeah, they're stuck. to be able to not only create content for right. them, but to be fucking coherent enough 
to to understand what I'm doing, you mm-hmm. know, and not get sucked into that sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle that we have here by just fucking existing by now. default, right? By default, yeah, you know? believe me. I mean, I got buddies that you know. I'm in a I'm in the the recovery community, right? And so I got a lot of buddies that are younger than me that have less clean time, that sort of thing, back home, and they're like, "Oh, dude, I should," you know, if they got like six months clean. They're like, "I should totally meet you in Patia." I'm like. Fuck you! You'll die. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. will literally because not. I mean, it is so much more supply than demand right now, yeah, and it's yeah. basically free yeah, compared basically. to what it costs in Los Angeles. It, and I'm like, dude, you'll die. You'll friggin' no, die. Of course, Eric, it is free. <laughs> it, it it's yeah. bad. Patty, it's bad. Mm, it's bad. bad. We were going down there. You noticed we were going down there every couple days. You, you went you went quite a bit at one point. I was like, bro, I was like, you back in town? You're like, I was, but now I'm back in town. And Patty. is it you yeah. and Tony? I mean, you guys are basically like no, all the you, 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 your buddy. You know, the great thing about Tony mm. is t- Tony, Tony doesn't party, right? Tony doesn't party. People think he, he drinks. Probably. No, he doesn't. No, he drink. doesn't. Does he? he just goes out? Home. He, does, he nice. just goes out. Well, like, I can so, hang out with him all yeah, day long. Yeah, Tony. Like Tony, a lot of people think he. And Tony does. He yeah, takes, other stuff. He takes sure, mushrooms sure. and stuff. Uh, yeah. he, 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 but yeah. like Tony, like Tony is a great person to be around because mm. he understands that balance. And again, mind you, Tony's out of. He's an LA guy too. Yeah, he, right. Mm-hmm. He, he came from that world. He was an <laughs> yeah. LA lawyer. Like oh, he yeah. came out of he, sure. fucking fast cars, hot bitches, mm-hmm. coke, like. And now he's at a point in his life where it is, it's all he's old like, hat yeah, to him. Yeah, because right he was saying, he's like, I don't want to drink. He's like, I want to bang girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to go out and meet girls, but yeah. I don't want to drink. They'll yeah. fuck up my workout the next yeah, day. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's That's the same, awesome. you know, a lot of, a lot of, and, you know, plugging myself in with these guys, you know, um, being friends. You know, I was hanging out with Tony yesterday mm-hmm. and like interact, being around these guys who are hyper successful men. Yeah. Like they're hyper successful at what they've yeah. chosen to do. And looking at how they move, how they interact, how they spend their time, mm-hmm. it, it reminded me. I'm like, oh, okay, I, I need to pull back. I gotta focus. And and, and 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 if I could give one piece of advice to any young brother, or sister, anybody who wants to come abroad, not even here to anywhere, find a mentor, find okay. another expat yeah. who's been there a while. Great idea. And mm. and like, look, say, okay, how do you survive this long here? Like, <laughs> right, sure. Bangkok is like, yo, it's it's funny. I always go back to. Uh, the uh, the quote from the Hangover movie is like, "Oh, Bangkok's got him now. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, right. It really is that kind of city. Like, yo, yeah, Bangkok yeah. can get you. So you know the whole bareback wall story. Yeah. I told you about oh, this. Dude. Yeah, bareback. Uh, Bangkok got bareback big time. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he started going out, and he's the dude. He fell for that that whole. Oh, it was her first night at the club thing. Sick and, buffalo. And, yeah, and like he was paying for the sick buffalo, mm-hmm. and like yeah, you sure. know, and it, the city had him, man. He yeah. was stuck mm-hmm. in that life. It's yeah. intoxic. Even if you're it's not totally doing intoxicating. drugs, it's intoxicating to have access. And desire yeah dude i came out here i mean i was uh 20 20 something years sober mm. and i was just like oh my i can't even imagine i cannot even imagine coming out here if i was still using oh yeah. man i would die of course but i mean the it, 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 everything's available yeah. yeah anything you want as, as an american yeah. they're like oh yeah sure here you go whatever and, and, you need and you know what like, it's bonkers man it, it's you know part of that is a culture thing yeah there's a Huge drug culture, mm-hmm. yeah. and there's an acceptance of it. You can bribe your way out of anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank God. Like it, <laughs> allegedly, thank fucking God. I'm yeah. not even allegedly. Like, it's, <laughs> it, 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 and and it's, it, but it it comes with that, like that, that, not not even a fear. It comes with that opportunity for self destruction. Mm. And to let loose, to do things you've never done before. You know, you'll you know in the candy an store. You always know there's an out. Yeah. I always say to guys, look at dude, if you like, especially the ones that have just gotten divorced and they got their friggin' nuts chopped off, or they're from. I said, look at dude, you got to come out here and bring a bunch of money, but go down to Patia, but get the Patia out of your system yeah, get that because out. there is nothing like Patia yeah. in the entire world. No, nothing. Amsterdam, nothing no, no, nothing. And you got to do that, and you got to get it out of your system. Yeah. Ideally, you'll have a wingman like you're yeah. talking about, yeah. so that I, on the fourth month he can be like, okay, bro, bro, you're like seventy grand in. You need to fuck. Can yeah, relax, yeah. yeah, and you need to pull back because you need yeah. to, you know, have a buddy get, to do get that. An apartment, chill for a few days, yeah. get some street food. Yeah, you got and, it out of your system. Yeah. And if and if you don't, then you're gonna end up like bareback Wall Street, yeah. and then your life yeah. is just gonna freaking crater. Yeah. You're doing ketamine with prostitutes that no, you're it's... telling people yeah. you're in love with. Right? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you're the manager of a bar now. You're a oh, yeah. I love that. No, assistant manager. Yeah. Guys, yeah. 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 Can't run that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have to work all the time. I'm the assistant manager. It it's. It is a play. And I guess, you know, that, that that would go under the section of the, the bad things. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, if yeah, you, but I mean. If, if you learn how to, ma- it, it, it's it's just one of those things. I'm blessed to have that self-control. Yeah, right. just, yeah you are. Um, 
<laughs> Uncle Sam gave it to me. My mom there beat it into go. me. Nice, dude. And it, and it's, One and, baseball bat at a time. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Bro, it was aluminum bat. I can still <laughs> oh, smell it. Damn. On the back you can of my, smell it I now. Can smell, I can feel the tingle <laughs> right on my sciatic nerve. Yeah. So, oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. She's skilled. Yeah, my mom, is, <laughs> <laughs> she grew up in the 70s, boy. She know. But it was, you know, a really... It, it, the biggest thing, and look, if any any of y'all want, anybody who listens to me wants a wingman, reach out to me. I, I'm gladly. Yeah, what's the best way to tips. get a hold of you? Uh, minority, minority, nomad. minority Nomad YouTube. everywhere. Okay, YouTube, got it. it my, I, Instagram. He, IG is probably a big yeah, thing. Yeah, Instagram, right I'm huge. Hit you Instagram, up. I'm okay. always there. But it, it's, it's definitely, it's very important to have a wingman or somebody, uh, uh, somebody especially somebody who's older than you. Mm-hmm. Like somebody who, who sees themselves in you is like yo i remember that kid. yeah don't so, follow someone them who there. knows the ropes yeah mm-hmm. the, especially in a place bangkok doesn't give a fuck about you mm. re, like here's it very just like new york doesn't yeah, yeah exactly like, it just las like, vegas like, like yeah, vegas eat you it was up like, man. oh it was, if you're not ready and, yeah. and most people aren't most yeah. people aren't do this. you recommend guys come out here like especially if they're in their like 20s or something they come out here with a buddy like don't come out here alone yeah never come out here alone like I mean, if you can get away with it, if, like, uh, I'm yeah. like, yo, bro, I'll pay for your flight, man. Don't Just, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Like, it, it, and and honestly, man, it 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 just makes it more fun because mm. I'll give you an example. Dominican Republic is a place called Sosua. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's where all the hookers are. Love the host. Yeah, right. Um, it's the Angeles city of the. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a great example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Sosua. We would go up there. Uh, we would fly in from Texas. So Spirit Airlines. Two hours, two and a half hours, two, right? Barely, two and a yeah. half hours. Spirit? Yeah. Spirit Jesus Airlines. Christ. <laughs> Not, nothing but the clothes on my back and shit. <laughs> budget hoeing. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Super budget You are a high roller <laughs> Boy, rolling up on the big yellow go. plane. Wait, I'm not wasting my money. <laughs> Look at me. I'm that's in the what, emergency exit that's row. That's one night, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so we would, we would go... <laughs> we would go up there and we would see and you got to remember dominicans are basically americans that speak spanish yeah culturally right right? it's coming out of new york so they know what we get they know Mm -hmm. how we can move Mm -hmm. uh thailand's not like that it's a totally different culture yeah that's pretty okay so you go to the dominican republic and these girls are rolling dudes Mm -hmm. and as guys we would go we would be sitting there and you know big d's on the beach shout out to big d and so so big d's on the beach does amazing canned Mm -hmm. chicken Amazing mm. can chicken and ribs. We would just sit there and we can see the guys who came there mm, by themselves yeah. for the first time because they read an article on the internet about right, so right, so. Yeah. And we're like, fuck, she's going He's to eat screwed. Him, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. We're, and, well, and, you and, see that here too, though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, we sit at the bar. Like, I'll go to Patia and sit at the, the expat bars and yes, just hang out I and know. just sit there and watch. Like, like, so I ate. You're like, oh, this fucking guy's uh, dead. First oh, of yeah. all, she's the fattest girl here. Come yeah. on, dude. Yeah, dude. She's got the eye patch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know she got seven kids and a buffalo. Yeah. yeah. You know she and you're about to be paying for all of them. Bro, or you see, you know, here in Bangkok, I've seen, like, you know, I, I would say probably some of the best looking girls are at uh, Nana Plaza. Like, the best looking for girls at top floor. Best lady boys, too. Some of the best. Very a lot of attractive. Best, like, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yep. And you'll sit there and you'll so see, you know, see them holding in some guy's hand who looks like he's 22. I'm like, bro. I wanted 70. Or, it's or, like, oh, you're dead, you man. You don't dude. know. Well, you're man, retirement. See, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Uh, when you're 70, you're too old to give a fuck anymore. Like, that's yeah, a, that's that's true, a right? win yeah. for you still. Like, here's the money. Yeah, here's the money. Just like, be with I, me. I met, I met, Spend time with I me. I met so many older dudes who exactly, they'll say that. I'm like, dude, he was like, man, I'm 70. Yeah, what do I, I care? I don't. Care watching what is she gonna take? Ten thousand bucks for me? Do you have any care. fucking idea how much money I have? Yeah, right exactly. now? So, I've like, met so on, many. I, I met so many extremely wealthy men who come out here and who have that exact like, dude. I, it's like I'm too old. I don't care. I yeah. know she's with me for my money. I'm yeah. fucking seventy and right. fat. I know. I got the money though. Yeah, I got the money. I'm enjoying like, it. Like so, like for me. But when you see a younger guy, a young dude, yeah. I was like, yo, there's a, there's no way you got the money to sustain that, and b, you're gonna get your heart trampled on. Yeah, they're really good at it. I'm gonna fuck her tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. In front right. of you, and like, and you're not going to be able to do a damn in thing in front of him. Is that what you do? Is that how like hey, you really hey, rub hey, it in hey, your hey, face I with your buddies, make, Dana? Make sure they Sometimes. know. Sometimes, sure Jesus, they know. <laughs> but it's, but it's like that vaginal integrity. That, for God's sake, I, I think that's probably one of the, the most. <laughs> not after me. I, th- <laughs> I think that's one of the most difficult things that a lot of uh, Western men need to learn and get used to, is when a real motherfucker walks in, mm. like they're going to take your chick here. Unless you figure out how the game is played, mm-hmm. if you're out here and a lot of and you got to understand the, the the tier of women here, all right? There's three tiers of women here. 
There's the non-pros who are flat out not in the game at all. Right. You bet not even blink at this bitch, mm -hmm. right? Then you got the semi-pros. Well, mm. no, for below that, Free you have lit. the pros. The pros who are flat out in the game. The game mm. is the game. Mm. They work at non positive Soy Cabo. This yep. is what they do. All for money. Them. This is a trade. This there. is it. Yep. But then you have the semi-pros. They aren't at non positive They're not. Uh, they're not a hooker. However, they're on Tinder. But they they're on Tinder mm. and they gonna make sure you pay for every motherfucking thing. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pay for her time. You're gonna take care of everything. That's that. I say that is a huge portion. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty. That's a pretty significant portion mm -hmm. of women you're going to interact with here, and if you don't figure out how to navigate those women, for example, mm -hmm. I know a, I, I've hooked up and dated a lot of the girls in this yeah. pro range because I can afford to. Yeah. Because I have a lifestyle that they want. Mm -hmm. I've got the big ass TV, my own condo, mm -hmm. nice. I go out to amazing places sure. to eat. Dress nice. I got a nice whip. I Take dress care nice. of yourself. Yep. Yeah. I can buy her like. Yo, it was like, yo, I want to I, I wanna go out to with my friends. Yeah, sure, let's go to Beam. Let's get a couple bottles. Mm -hmm. So this is fucking nothing, yeah. right? Send me pros. And I know she's in the game, but I also know. But you know. If a real yeah. baller show up, mm. like a real motherfucker comes she's in, out. it's a wrap. Yeah. I, I know that. I, 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 it's like not instantly. Yeah. Not like she's like. Yeah, it's like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, all right. However, girls in the game game, mm. right? You know what it is. Like, oh. Mm. Go. So what about a girl that's not in the game that you just meet in the club? Love them. Love them. Yeah, quite a few. Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my number one and number two are both mm -hmm. like that. Like, yep. they're both, like, they, and one of them makes way more money than me. I'm yeah, like, right, damn, sure. girl, you buy me flowers, bitch. Right. But it's, I it's. I need some new sneakers. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I have, like, like. You know how much this TV sent me back? Bro, I need some bro, as, a, as a man, I'd be like, she, 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 I, I just, she goes, oh, hey, you want me to buy that for you? I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, but like, yeah. <laughs> but I do kind of like it though. But it, but you know that that's that, that's that stupid. Up. That's that stupid Western. Yo, my girl bought me a P, uh, PlayStation Four. I was like, yeah, all day long. My birthday, like, yeah, I'm like, that's what I'm talking it. about, right? There. Yeah, fuck you, Danny. No. Oh, well, <laughs> you're married. Come on, man. You can't let him. You can't leave him hanging. <laughs> but it's 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 like that's that's one of the cool things about living here, right? <laughs> when you do when you do find one, yeah. when you found one. Yeah. Jib is fucking Jesus, dope, yeah, super no doubt. dope. Yeah. Yeah. When you do find one. Holy shit. It's such a if you want one though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really. Right? Not everyone does. You're at, they absolutely just want right. A date, there date, was, date, date, I, date, yeah. I'm finding myself, you know, after living here six years, getting to that point where I need to I want to slow down. Mm. Like where I go out and fuck whatever moves, I'm like, yeah, this is boring. Mm -hmm. not funny yeah, no, anymore. I get it. Like I'm getting to that point where I'm having more bad sex than good sex. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, it's just a matter going through the motions. Just yeah. like, Your mind somewhere else. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. too many edibles. Yeah, there yeah, you I go. Mean, it's bad. Yeah, dial it back. But, but but you know, you find a girl. I'll, I'll give you a great example. The girl I'm seeing. Um, it was her birthday, and she's always had a spot on the team. Yeah, mm. I, I believe in a stable. Uh, mm. probably, I, I don't know if a lot of guys. I don't, I don't believe in monogamy. Yeah, you're sure. Yeah, I know. You're very yeah, poly. We know each other. You're yeah, yeah, poly. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm poly. So, um, my girls all know this. Like mm. they all know who I am. But it, I, it's no secret. He, Eric's so, like upfront about it. Like, yeah, if you're sure. not down, you're no, not down. You're not down. We're not cool. Right. We be friends. Cool. Yeah. Love you. Um, but my number one, and my number two, they both know each mm. other. And, and, and they're poly as well. They do it. Yeah. So, my number. It was my number two's birthday. Um, and. I my sister gets on me. She's like, "You you move like a boyfriend, always." Is how I date. Mm -hmm. Everything I do is romantic. I yep. pull out chairs, open door. I'm mm. a boyfriend kind of move. Mm. And I spend my girl. I my number two. I forgot it was her birthday, mm. but I saw it on uh, Facebook. I was like, oh shit, it's her birthday. I, and I was like, "Yo, uh, what are you doing for your birthday?" She's like, "Oh no, no plan." I was like, "Look, I got you for the whole day." Mm. She's like, "You sure?" Because she was supposed to be out of town. Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I found out she was staying in town. And she was like, yeah, you sure? I was like, you know, I got you. So I cleared the schedule. I told my friends, like, look, I need y'all to go to the club, get a yeah. bottle. We're going to meet you guys. There, I got her. And I spent the entire day with her. Nice. I took her to the spa. Mm -hmm. I got her flowers. I took her out to eat. We had a couple cocktails nice, to drink. Mm -hmm. um, and then I took her to the club because I knew she wanted to, she loves to dance. So I went out mm -hmm. to the club. I made sure all my friends were there so I can, I knew she was going to have a good time. Yeah. It was going to be just me and her at the club, right? yeah. at the table. It's going to be me, her, and all my friends at the table mm -hmm. celebrating her birthday. Yeah. Doing stuff like that, you don't do that for a hooker, no, no, dude. yeah, no. or even a semi pro, not even you know a semi pro, yeah, yeah. Like, like this was some boyfriend girlfriend, yeah, it's girlfriend, shit. Shit, yeah, and absolutely. I was like, that's great, dude, but oh. she's on the team, but she's a, mm -hmm. on the team, on the team, right? She's on mm -hmm. team Eric, and I'm like, oh man, I was like, I like this, 
Mm. You know, I was like, I want to do this more often. Yeah. And, and and there's never really been a point in my life where I felt that way. Mm. But it took me coming here to get the patio out of my system. Sure. You know, and yeah. again, I would occasionally go on a patio and, and do whatever yeah, no, we do. It doesn't mean, you, yeah. But, you know. But the, you also know the rules, dude. Look at your, yeah. your, your but, boundaries. So there's so many guys like either listening to this or like even watch my YouTube channel. Where oh, yeah, I should go out and do this. And this girl, she really likes me. We've been talking online and everything. I'm like, dude, you come here. Yeah. Don't do this remotely. Lisa, yeah. Eric knows. Eric knows, mm -hmm. right? You're, because the semi pros, you know, a pro's a pro. Yeah. The mm -hmm. semi pro, a lot of guys maybe don't know. Yeah, it's hard. Potentially. Right? Yeah. Sometimes, like, you got to, like, there's certain questions. Well, she's in college. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah well, okay. there's the whole sideline thing, like, the yeah. whole sideline or gig culture freelance. here as well, yeah. freelance. And so, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like, I know a lot of guys who get caught up with girls who are, are very clearly semi pros. Like, like yeah. I look at their IG and, like, Whoa! Like, come on, come bro. On, yeah, bro. Right. Yeah. And uh, you gotta know. Yeah, yeah you and gotta he's know. like, no, no, man. We're, I, like, she's really into me. I'm like, ah, are you sure? She's and, really into your ten thousand baht a month. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like some of these guys, like they don't know or they don't want to know. They don't want to know, and, and you got to be real with yourself. Yeah. If, if you're, if you don't give a fuck, is that seventy year old? Mm. Like, like Joe Rogan calls it. He's like, yeah, the fuck you, money. Yeah. Like, yeah oh, fuck you. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Dude, yeah. Like, and when you're seventy and old, and I'm like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. fuck yeah. it. I got yeah. it. That's why I yeah. work my ass off. I mean, when you get exactly that soon, why, why, that soon anyway. This is so. why I worked my ass off for 45, 50 years. Yeah. Have you ever seen the photo of uh, like the old fat dude, like a European looking guy with like a young chick? And it says, uh, when your son asks you why he shows, oh, this is when your daughter uh, asks yeah, you exactly. why she has to go to college and uh, work hard, show her this photo. And then it says the same photo. It says when your son asks you why he has to go to college and work hard, show him this photo. Yeah, exactly. You completely can do agree. And 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 you know, <laughs> it's funny because I think so many dudes are we're taught to not desire. Hmm. We're taught we're like, oh, you're a scumbag. You're 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 a creepy old man. And be like. No, bitch, fuck you. What? Because I'm nature, 50. Man. Because I'm 50, I, I shouldn't find 25 year olds yeah, attractive. No, oh, no. Son, fuck yeah, you, but bitch. dude, you got. I mean, let's face it. Dating here is completely different than yeah, dating yeah. at home. Yeah, it's 180 dynamic, degrees out yeah. of phase, yeah. and I yeah. would argue infinitely better. I, oh, it's Jesus any, Christ! Any, there, I don't think there's any man who actively dates that would tell, you, unless he dates a very specific kind of woman. Yeah, that right. would tell you that dating in the West is is not as is it's is ridiculous. Better. It's it's. It's so it's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. It, it's guys, look, man, cut your fellas, nuts off and it, just it, like it, show guys, up. Guys, you're, oh man, I, it's hard to put in words how fucking ridiculous mm. it yeah. is. Back home, the stuff that I'm seeing, mm. the the things that men are telling me, the videos that are popping up on these fucking websites. Yeah, right. It was like, yo, dudes are being turns into fucking women yeah no totally and and and, and, th and this is not to say that women i know my sister's a fucking g my mm -hmm. sister's a dog right dudes are being taught that yo it, it's it's fucked up to tell a woman that she's unattractive <laughs> i'm like yo i no, like yo excuse me the truth hurts i don't no want to fuck I say you it or not because i'm not attracted to you no great everybody's beautiful no everybody's not beautiful yeah, right, it's a matter exactly. of perspective sorry not so wealthy, everyone's exactly. not a model yeah. Everybody, I was, I was like, yo, I'm a good, I'm a, a re relatively good looking dude in my opinion. But if you put me next to Dwayne the Rock fucking Johnson, of course most women are gonna go with that guy. <laughs> He's rich sure. and famous right, and good looking right, right. and bigger. Like, what are you talking about? I'm so, realist. But no, fuck, I'm beautiful too. Like, why don't you pick me? Uh, fuck that. I'm a queen. My king should teach me. Oh so my here's god. Here's the dude. thing. Uh, so my buddy MJ. Uh, he's. I don't. Know, do you know MJ? He lived out here for a bit. Uh, he. Uh, he moved back to Alabama. He's a. Uh, no, not Alabama. Ten Tennessee is a truck driver. Mm. And um, he a uh, black dude from. Uh, he lived out here for a few years. He was working as a like modeling and freelance stuff. But he posted this thing on Facebook that he's always getting kicked off Facebook for shitty posts. Mm. But it was like, uh, ladies, you want every guy to be your king, but you've got five kings a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you keep getting sure. run through. It's 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 like either you either you want to be a kept woman or you want to be an independent woman. Which one you want to be? So uh, you it, can't be both. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I, like I know people in the U.S. have good situations, right? Relationship wise, mm -hmm. but sure. No. But it's it's rapidly becoming the minority. What did fifty one percent of the people in California are freaking divorced? We're excellent at, at suing people and getting divorced in California. We love getting divorced. It's ridiculous. But, it, it, it's, it, but I think it's a matter of being, uh, and this all all this shit comes back to mm. one simple truth. 
honesty. Yeah. Mm. And, and not only honesty with other people, it's honesty with yourself. Yeah. And part of the problem is that men, and we're just talking about men, and it can go for women too, we're just talking about men right now. Men, particularly men of color, are not being taught how to be honest with themselves because they're, you don't want black men to be honest with themselves. You know how big of a threat black men would be if we had the same education as white men? A threat how? In every single way. This is why. When you take, when you have a socioeconomic equality yeah. of two men, mm -hmm. then whoever works the hardest is going to, well, obviously. Not obviously, but potentially. But, but, but yeah, there's I mean, some it, luck involved, the, of course. The, the like, well, the likelihood of equal, when you have two things on equal plane, all, yeah. all, all things being equal, all things being equal, one person mm -hmm. who works harder than the other person Fair is going to be <laughs> yeah. succeed, right? If you take the the hardships that African Americans have had to deal with, mm -hmm. historically speaking, and you really went equitable on that, mm -hmm. and you put on top of that the simple work ethic that we're born, we're raised with, mm -hmm. particularly when you look at athletics, yep, for yep. example, okay. a great example. Yeah, sure. While we throw we thrive so much in athletics, mm -hmm. and then you put us on the same level playing field. Mm. Holy shit, the world changes. But why would it be dangerous? Yeah, I don't see a danger, danger there. Danger, dangerous for those in power who don't want to see it. Mm. The same fucking reason there's voter suppression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I don't yeah. think my vote's getting counted. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the, it was like, oh, no, no, we can't have that. The mm -hmm. same reason they went past the DREAM Act, because you would have millions of young Latino voters. Mm -hmm. Who are they going to vote for? We know who they're going to vote for. Yeah. They're going to fuck Democrats. Sure. That's dangerous yeah. to yeah. those people. So, and okay. again, this is like... Like some motherfuckers playing chess, some uh, some playing checkers. Oh sure, I mean come on, yeah. like, some like, playing tiddlywings. Yeah, like we're looking, we're like, oh okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, bring it back to our conversation. When you teach men how to figure, find out who they truly are, mm -hmm. and it might not even be a man. You might be, well, I want to be a woman now. Like sure. when you Whatever. teach it, humans, humans, how to be honest with themselves and honest with the, each other. It's very difficult to manipulate and control that individual. Completely agree. But I think back to what you're saying. I mean, just, you know, your buddies that are like stuck, right? Yes. Back home. Education. Yeah. Like they just, they don't know what they don't know. And, yeah. and unconscious incompetence is one of the most de uh, debilitating mm. diseases yeah. anybody mm. can suffer from because they just don't know. And, and, and they're easy to manipulate. Absolutely. Especially when you present them with somebody. It's like, oh, you're going to have a better life if you start working at mobile pumping gas. Right. Okay, sure. Or go to Thailand. They're or, like, well, shit, dude, yeah. mobile. Yeah, yeah, absolutely mobile. Or, or, or vote for this individual. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, oh, he's going to make it better for you. I mean, okay. think about it. Just back. I mean, how many people vote for the person they vote for because their buddy voted for them? Or their parents. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or their parents. Their family, or yeah. their, their community. Sure. Like, yep. you know, black, mo <laughs> a lot of black people vote Democrat because that's what black people do. Is it? Okay. I didn't know that. Black, oh. the, yes. Okay. Like if yeah. you're if you're a black Republican, holy shit. That's you're, weird. You are the height of a sellout sellout. Really? You're you've Bro. lost your blackness. You're Bro. you're white now. Condoleezza Rice, Herman Cain, like like the Colin Powell when he went to mm -hmm. bro, being a black Republican, it's a it's a joke. I gotta send you the link to Key and Peele. So yeah, I send the the black Republican meeting the with the leather Repu jackets. <laughs> exactly with Michael Jamal Water. Yeah. Like it's we're not a monolith. Yeah, we're not a monolith. Like it's uh, like somebody's white wife. Yeah, and, and I was like, you know, like somebody's white wife. What was her name? But what, like it was it's 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 a running joke okay. within our community yeah. that all like all and it's statistically speaking, it's true. It is. It, it, it it's is the that. Truth. Okay. Black voters do vote Democratic considerably more often, but I mean, there, there has to be. And I, I'm a liberal myself, so I'm mm -hmm. not trying to like pontificate for Republicans, but there, there has to be some aspects of the platform, the Republican platform, that would appeal to to Black voters plenty. in some sense. There are plenty of aspects yeah. of the Republican platform. The problem yeah. is, uh, the, and the problem isn't just an African American thing; yeah. it's an American thing. Mm -hmm. We're too lazy to do our research. Yeah, uh, and you know, whoever has the nicest TV ads, yeah, uh, sure, are going to get it. And that's why you they know, make them. And, and we have an issue. <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest problems in America right now is that we we advocate we we laud and and celebrate ignorance. Mm. We we don't celebrate intelligence. We don't celebrate accomplishment 
uh, beyond athletics or celebrity status. The reason that you have, you had people saying that Dwayne The Rock Johnson should run for president of the United States. There's not a damn thing The Rock has ever done to qualify him to, qualify. to be president of the United States however, of America. However, I would argue that the current president has never done a damn thing I to agree. qualify him. And, and, which, yeah, and, no, which was... is the, and which is the point. And that motherfucker is now showing. Probably going to get a second term. And he and he is the uh, perfect example of the problem with our nation. No, we've, it's, it's one of the many. Problems, why do you why why do we care what Kim Kardashian or or fucking Chris Evans think about education yeah, mm-hmm. sure. instead of somebody who's actually there scientist. are idols versus the scientists yeah. and the engineers exactly. and the business people. It's and and it's like when you go when you go and 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 this is another and in the article I wrote. Um, about how travel can save the lives of young black mm, men. Yeah, this right. is one, also one of the points that I make, is that when you see other people in in being celebrated, you know, mm-hmm. doctors, yep. lawyers, sure. uh, and academics mm-hmm. in general, mm-hmm. scientists, yeah. right. you know, creatives, artists, totally. um, being celebrated for their accomplishment and their hard work in, in places like Iceland, in Germany, in Sweden, in mm. Japan, in Korea, mm. when these people are being present it like this is a thing to strive they're to a be. superhero yeah. like yo yeah. yo like yo you're gonna be a math professor like that's a thing that you try to be it's a well, think about thing. how the thai kids worship i mean they asked me they're like oh you professor do you work yeah. at a university yeah. Yeah. Ajahn, Ajahn. Yeah. Ajahn. it's it's a respect yeah. Yeah, for 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 that kind well, of intelligence and accomplishment. but it's not happening back home and, mm. and it's bleed it, it you look at our political system like, holy shit. <laughs> these two are, it's a these shit are show. The This is the best, best we got. Yeah. These the, are the, the best, best two best. men. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's frightening, dude. And, 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 it's, and, and it's not just there. We see it. I'm from Texas. We got Abbott. Like, this yeah. motherfucker. Like, it's weird for uh, us, too, though, because we're looking back at America from the outside. Yeah. And I often wonder, like, yeah, like do, do i have friends from from the u.s who are looking back in and they're like what the fuck mm. or like do they see that internally or is it like me from the outside looking in and i'm like what bro the fuck I, is I, going on? I i i think it's the longer we're gone the more we see the scars and the warts yeah i i would say my early years i spent a lot of time at hostels defending the united states like arguing with fucking mm. Europeans, and to this day, like anybody who talks shit about the U.S., fuck you. Yeah. Like I'm still that dude. Like I'll defend our country. red, right, and blue don't run. You might be, you might be right, <laughs> but fuck you, bro. Like, we, we're gonna throw down. Like, I, like we gonna go at it. Cause I love my country. I love, yeah. I love. It. But it's you know normally when the criticism comes, it's from some self righteous douchebag yeah. perspective. You know, but if we're having a real conversation, like yo, man, the United States is a world leader. It should be doing better in yeah. these ways. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely that's true. Definitely true. I totally agree. But if you're coming at it from a dick, like, oh, Canada's better than America, fuck you, you bitch. Like, that's... I saw this great uh, map the other day. It was like this little red line right above Toronto. It's like 50% of Canada lives below this red line. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then it was like, uh, I, I see all these, like, how, how Americans see the rest of the world. And yeah. it's like, it's a lot of the jokes are true. Yeah, there's know? a there's a, a, a grain of truth in all of it. Yeah, and, and and it's like it goes back to what we were talking about before. Is like I when I go back home and when I talk to people from back home, I feel bad mm. for them more so than angry or any. I'm like, man, can we can we figure how many people can we save? Yeah, you know, um, with what we do because we're we can talk all day. Um, and, 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 and I think anybody who finds this, uh, podcast or vlog or whatever, um, they're looking for it. Yeah. They're looking for it. But how do we create a, a world or a movement where they don't necessarily even have to look for it, where they're just going to find it, where our voices become the norm, where, you know, you'll see some academic or somebody who's speaking, uh, from a place of intelligence more than you see a Kardashian. For example. Well, because mm-hmm. th- 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 think about it. How often do you see Neil deGrasse Tyson on TV versus yeah. Kim Kardashian? Yeah. Right. The the numbers are not representative of the value that they add to the yeah. world. Yeah. I mean, to the not the, the species, the to history. Yeah. To to absolute history. If I could turn on the TV every day and see Neil deGrasse Tyson in place of where you would see a Kardashian, oh, mm-hmm. the world would be a very different place. Very different place. But you know, there are a lot of people in position of influence and power who don't want to ever see that. Mm. You see a highly intelligent black man on TV all the time saying mm. highly intelligent shit that will change the world and cost them money. 
Well, no, no, not no, not no, just. No. I mean, I think we could argue all day that an, an educated, you know, critically thinking, skeptical population is dangerous to oh. anyone. Yeah, no, they fear. Well, well, you, no, you no, got... no, no. well I think is is dangerous to people who are fucking up or trying to. Well, sure, they're trying to get away with something. Yeah, trying to get away yeah. with something like yeah. somebody, a, a person in power that is intelligent, critically mm -hmm. thinking, hardworking, actually doing his job yeah. for the people that he was elected to represent has nothing to worry about. Have you guys seen the, I think it's on Netflix, um, it's like it's like this six or seven episode thing, but it's the story of the guy that became the, he basically started Fox News. Oh, Rupert Murdoch? Rupert Murdoch? No, no, no. Well, you know, he like owned it, right? Oh, but he then he it. hired the guy that basically, I, I can't remember his name, but the point is, is that they basically show how he was the guy that put Trump in to the presidency because Fox News was the one that was like totally promoting him. Into so and obviously there's some Hollywood to it. Right? Yeah, yeah, but the point is, is that it's very interesting to watch it because you realize and certainly since I was in the media oh, for years, yeah, I did watch it. Yep. You know the yeah, one I'm talking exactly about? What was that what was guy's called? name? Um, the fact, the guy that... He, he was uh, uh, Bannon. Uh, is it, no, no, Steve Bannon? It was, it was a thing about Steve Bannon. Bannon was in it. It was a political operative. Oh my God, I watched it. I don't think I've seen this. You know, uh, the, anyway, I know exactly what so, you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. having been in the media, I mean, I, it was ridiculous, like how much we controlled the narrative, certainly from CBS um, mm -hmm. during 9 11. Yeah. yeah. And it was, anyway, the point is, is that, you know, you, you give people, you know, essentially what they want. Yeah. And people want to be entertained. They don't want to have to think too hard yeah. because it's like, what do you do at the end of a day? You sit down and watch TV. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily like at 11 in the morning say, okay, well, I'm going to sit down and watch some PBS because yeah. that'll totally improve my work day and I'll be able to get more. No, no, no. You come home and you base the Simpsons. Yeah. A, a six know? pack and a yeah. Yeah. Watch Married with Children. Yeah. And that's the way that they yeah. designed TV years ago, right? Yeah. I mean, because it's going to be entertainment and yeah. we're not only going to do that, we're going to manipulate the shit out of people to buy these products. It's the same thing with sports. Sports, right like people who get super invested in a sports team mm -hmm. right like they they own it they love it like they, they my, keep score my, my browns yes. my, my 49ers yeah go browns that that yeah you know horrible team but yeah they're doing good this year right fuck you 4-1 baby about to be yeah. up on the steelers this but, but, but i mean when's the last time they won a game before yeah. this season but no, why are you but, living in the past, bro? But, but here's the other thing: living like, the moment in the future. I, I've got I've got to give Browns fans so much respect. Like being a New England guy, like from New England, it's easy to be a New England Patriots fan because they always win. Yeah, same with the Browns yeah. never win, and right. their fans never That's quit. Like yeah. Growing up loving the Boston Bruins, yeah. people are like, well, of course. But here, here's the thing: that you know, people get so invested in sports for the same reason. Mm -hmm. It's escapism. Yeah. And it's easy. Yeah, right. Right, and like there's competition involved. I can somehow be better than you, and you know? I, I can attach my personal value yes, to the yeah. value of this championship mm -hmm. team. Or, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So there's a big part of that, and I think that's one of the things that being in, especially in Asia, or at least in Bangkok for me, helps me escape. Is like you don't see that culture like surrounding you. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I think the other nice thing about moving over here too is, I mean, it's such a big delta from the United States. You come over here and you basically pick and choose what's going to be around you. Yeah. Like you're yeah. like, okay, that's negativity. I'm not going to sign up for ThaiVisa.com. Yeah. I just don't. You know, whereas at home, I mean, a lot of times you're it just it just what it you, you're thrown into it. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing you can yeah, do. The, yeah, you're stuck. But whereas it's here, it's like, well, I come here. No, I choose to do this. I choose to hang out with Dana. Yep. I choose to do this. I choose to meet. You know, we're going to have these conversations, and I am not influenced. At least I don't believe I am. Maybe I'm delusional, but like I'm not influenced on what to buy here. Mm. I certainly am. Like, oh, gotta buy. It. Southern California, my God, the cars that I drove were a ridiculous waste of money. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I had a certain socioeconomic thing. So clearly I need this 50, 60, 000. and well, of course the next one I buy, well, that's got to be better than the last so one. Here's the thing about that that I, I found funny. And Eric, you've been here about as long as me, so maybe you have the same or different view. But there's definitely a culture of consumerism in Thailand that, mm -hmm. that as an expat, we escape. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, oh, yeah. like, because Thai, a lot of Thais, not all, but a lot of Thais are very. Fashion conscious. Very, very, sure. very concerned with their image mm -hmm. outwardly. Yeah. And so, like, Mercedes, they want to drive a Mercedes. They want to have, you know, the Chanel pin. Or they want to have, like, the Gucci well, bag. I, I would say that's that's here. Yeah. It's a Bangkok. Thing. Yeah. yeah it's a big city. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely no. a Nissan, big city. it's not like. It's not like that. No, yeah, it's not like that. Nissan, North or, like, well, in Nissan, they want the truck, right? They want yeah, the, yeah. the Hilux. Yeah. The Hilux, yeah. But so, but I'm saying is, <laughs> as expats, we kind of, we skirt that. Yeah, because we are that. Yeah, and so we're able to essentially, you could roll in to somewhere with a, 
a short uh, sandals and a t-shirt. Yeah, short sandals and a tank no, top. You know, yeah. crazy. In, in no big deal. Well, also, I'm yeah. literally going to the best restaurants in shorts, t-shirt, and flip flops, and nobody looked. At nobody them. cares because we're foreigners. Yeah. It's crazy. So I, I met right? him. Where the ties? They wear like seven hundred dollar jackets. You know? I, I met him for one of his. Uh, in one of his, Jim and I met him and uh, one of your friends for a uh, dinner at uh, Hoi Kwang. Is it Hoi Kwang Heritage? Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you were in shorts and flip flops <laughs> and a t-shirt and like. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Is it, <laughs> it, like this is a place. Like the, this is the best reason for being friends with Eric. Not the best reason, obviously, but one of them is is a Top benefit. 10. It's a benefit. There you go. Because he's like, oh, he's like, I'll take you to the spot I know. Literally, it's you have to walk through the lobby of a hotel around this water feature into this little <laughs> restaurant in the back, and we had this dope meal for like a thousand baht for yeah. four of us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Is that amazing. great? I yeah, love amazing. that. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. And owned by nice the princess, work. The, yeah, uh, princess of Thailand. And yeah. then he's like, "Oh, let me order something that's like not here." He's like, "I gotta ask about something," and like he knows stuff. Yeah. Or he's like, I, "I meet him at a steakhouse <laughs> one night. He was introducing me to uh, my partner Jay and uh, Dapper Villains, and he's like, oh, let's go up to the uh, the bar upstairs.'" And we get up to the bar, and I'm like, "Oh, this is a cool bar." He's like, "No, it's not the bar." And he slides a painting on the wall, oh, and it, it nice moves over. Work. And there's a hidden stairway, yeah. and he takes us up the stairway. And there's like just this, this rooftop, like a speakeasy thing. Perfect. No one That's up good. there except us. No, I love mm. it, dude. That's great. Oh, that was the first time you met Jay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's like whenever I meet Eric yeah. out somewhere, it's like. Like something unique is about yeah. to happen. Yeah, that's and, great. And that's a great thing about like living it. And you mm. know that that goes back uh, to the quality of life mm -hmm. uh, thing about Absolutely. this city. It's like we have access to so much cool shit. Yeah, here, for man. sure. Yeah, try finding a rooftop bar in America with one exit. Oh goodness. <laughs> well, you could, but it would be like a thousand dollars. And it wouldn't, to well, go. it wouldn't be there long. No, no I'm saying with yeah. one exit, like, it would never it, pass code. Nah, some yeah, shit, there's yeah. that. Man. That's a good point. But man, it's 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 freedom, man. Yeah. And, and you know, bringing it all the way around, you know the. Bangkok, you know, and Bangkok strange, you know, we yeah. all love living here. Yeah. But for me, um, as somebody who's traveled to almost most of the countries in the world, yeah, almost right. over half, um, it, it really is one of those places that's so damn special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And given what we deal with as people of color in the U S yeah, no, it's just game changing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you come it's a whole here, new life. It, it, it is starting over. Yeah. It is the best example of you. You freedom. come here in t total freedom. Crazy freedom. You, you right. come here and uh, you cr you you become who you always dreamed that you could be. Yeah, that's wow. so awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what Minority no, Nomad Minority yeah. Nomad's all about. Right? Let's get, get one more up top. Up over top. Here Boom. we go. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of Eiffel Tower going <laughs> yeah. on. With, with that, I, we, we've really blown past your time oh, a lot, Eric. So I want to thank you. Thank yeah. you, dude. Course, yeah. It's yeah. awesome yeah. hanging out so, with you, man. Real. So MinorityNomad.com. Yep. Minority Nomad on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Everywhere. Links yep. will be in the show notes, in the description of the video, if that's where you're watching it. And of course, Eric will be on again in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you again, brother. Appreciate right, it. Thank you, guys. Until Appreciate next time, everyone, stay strange. Peace. Yeah.